Oh, I don't know the password. Discharge the duties. Is Kendra here? Is the new Kendra here? I don't know who she is. I can't see. Is that six for me? What does she look like? The only blind is Lori. I don't know. I can't see her. Just announce it. I can't see it. I don't know who she is. All right, you ready? February 1st. Fuck. All right, let's go. Meeting call to order today is Tuesday, January 17th. It is now 7.25 p.m. Town Council meeting in the Town Council Chambers, 1170 Main Street, West Warwick, Rhode Island. Councilman <coughs> Lichardi? Here. Councilman Messia? Here. Councilman Padula. Here. Vice Chair um, John D'Amico. Here. Council President Goslin. Here. There's a quorum on record. Citation for Christopher Montero. Is Chris here? Christopher here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to wait till next meeting and make sure? Yeah, let's do that, yeah. All right, we'll hold off till next meeting. He was supposed to be here tonight. Nick? Minutes of previous meeting nope. resolved nope. that the- No, Rossi. Oh. Robert Rossi, Rossi Law Officer's presentation. Sorry. You know, Rachel. Sure. <clears throat> Good evening, council members, and uh, happy new year. Um, one of the pre couple previous meetings ago, we had some discussion about bankruptcy. Councilman Padula had some questions, so um, I had mentioned at the time that I would ask Mr. Rossi to uh, join us tonight to um, to have the conversation answer any questions you may have. I With think that, most, most of the questions came from Councilman Padula uh, based upon the bankruptcy. So, Yeah, my concerns are um, you see businesses that go bankrupt in town. Sure. And they're reopening. They're in the same. They move from one building to the other. They're still conducting business in town. And I see all these thousands of dollars, like every one of us have to pay, and it seems like they're just escaping from all the uh, I'm just curious how, how that can be. Well, first of all, you're not alone in your frustrations about that because um, uh, I see it myself um, often. However, uh, bankruptcy is a federal statute and it allows people to um, get a, a fresh start. So if you have an individual, for example, that might be um, a carpenter, and might have a construction business. And that person might have had a few bad business deals to the point where he couldn't get out from underneath the debt. He would go into bankruptcy court and the company, it would be the company that would be in the bankruptcy because almost all the time they are incorporated. The uh, bankruptcy court would then issue a discharge of that debt and now what's this individual supposed to do? Um, what, he, what he or she knows is carpentry. That's how they earn their living. So their option could be to work for someone, but more than likely, uh, the more practical thing for them to do is to start again. So you would see that same business, um, not the same business, the, the business in the bankruptcy is gone, but they start up a new business and it could be at the same location. But it is, um, it's frustrating, but there is no violation of law by any uh, means. Mr. Rossi, what I, I understand all that. I understand that if people are down and out, they go bankrupt and they do try to get a second, and, I, and my hat goes off to them. But <coughs> I, I'm not gonna mention any names, but there's three or four businesses here, and myself included, my family's been in business for five generations. 
um, we don't just pack up and instead of open up on the A, P, and Son, open up on the P and, uh, and S, P and Son, and jip the town out of thirty, forty thousand dollars reopen. I mean, that's that's not giving a good uh, example. What I, what I'm getting at is these businesses are doing it more or less for a living. It's not the first time they've done it in town. And it seems like they're just shrugging their nose at the taxpayers and the businesses at this town that pay their fair share, and they're not. And they, they re do it again. They, they, I mean, there's gotta be something. How, how can they get away with not paying? If, if I don't pay my house taxes, I go bankrupt. I put it in a, in a corporation. My house is uh, an LLC or a corporation, uh, Padula and Family. So now, Padula and Family, we decide to go bankrupt after owing the town maybe $30,000 in taxes. So now we're gonna re get, get the courts to let us go bankrupt, which they would because we can't afford it, and then redo it again. I start over again, I'm already 30,000 ahead, cost me 500 to go bankrupt. Well, it costs more Is than it, 500. Well, I'll say 1,500, <laughs> it don't cost 30 grand. <laughs> well, not, my concern is what protection do we have from these people keep doing it over and over and over again? None? Under the current bankruptcy law, you don't have much recourse. You don't have much recourse. I, I mean, it, the only way to really overturn a bankruptcy would be the, to, sh to show a, a fraud or something else of that nature. But you, in, in, in order to do that, you, you need some very solid evidence it takes a lot of money to put that evidence together, and that assumes that it's there. That assumes that there was a fraud. There may not be, so you could spend thousands upon thousands of dollars and find absolutely nothing. Um, it's the way that the bankruptcy courts, uh, the bankruptcy statute is, uh, is drafted, and um, Congress meant it to be a fresh start. We may seem, it may seem like there are some abuses, and, and there, there most likely are, but um, there's not much that can be done in that situation. Not much at all. I thought in a bankruptcy, uh, I'm wrong, I mean, I'm just, I'm not arguing with you. In a no. bankruptcy, that taxes are not included in a bankruptcy. It depends. Um, for real estate taxes, there is a statutory lien. Um, the lien itself remains on the real estate. So the real estate itself owes that tax. So um, in a bankruptcy, um, you, can, you can pretty much um, still get that real estate tax paid. Um, but where the tax is not secured, that there is no statutory lien such as the tangible tax, in that situation, um, or in the, the motor vehicle excise tax as well. Both taxes are not uh, unsecured. There's, there is no lien for the, for the payment of those taxes. The only tax that is non-dischargeable is the tax that was billed within the one year period before the filing of the bankruptcy petition. But in the case of businesses, as I said, you usually have a corporation, almost always have a corporation. So once the bankruptcy goes through, even though that one year tax is non-dischargeable, there's really no assets, there's, there's nothing to go after because the corporation is gone at that point. So we forget it, we can't collect anything. No, no. No, I appreciate yeah. you coming in. Um, you know, giving us what, how it's supposed to be. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I just. Think, I think we. I, I think it was explained to us numerous times, and it just wasn't the answer you were looking for, and you wanted it from somebody else. <laughs> well, everybody uh, didn't like know for sure. I'd like to give you a different answer, but <laughs> everyone I, didn't I know, know for sure. You know, we were getting all kinds of uh, different opinions, and I wasn't getting the answers that were by law. I was getting opinions. I don't want opinions. That's what five councilmen are here for. Opinions. Yes. When it comes to law, that's why we call you guys. <laughs> so, no, I appreciate it. I thank you. Now I won't be asking anymore. How come we can't get this? He's down the street. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you very much.
minutes of previous meeting resolved that the minutes of December 20th, 2016 town council meeting and executive sessions are hereby accepted. I'll move the resolution. I'll second the resolution. Moved and second. Any discussion? Any public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. Uh, Paul, before you move on, Jay does have something. Yes, we, we never closed the, uh, the minutes of the last executive session. So you just make a motion. So I move that the minutes of December 20th, 2016 executive session be kept closed in accordance with Rhode Island General Laws 42-46-4 and 42-46-5A2. I'll second it. Move and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Have it. Oh, and thanks, John, Rose, and Lori for putting up with me with that, and thanks for making that appointment. Thank you. You're consent agenda, license applications. Resolve that the consent agenda haven't been posted, all matters being referred to the proper departments <coughs> and being disposed of, awaiting recommendation, the same is hereby approved. I'll move the resolution. I'll second the resolution. Moved and second. Any discussion? Any public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Those licenses that have been renewed is West Warwick Lodge, Fraternal Water of Police for your pool table license, um, business license for Expose Hair Studio, Chopper's Barbershop, Ritz on the Main, Virginia Transportation, Standard Mill Machinery, Harry's Auto Service, TMED Holdings, McGill General Contracting, Ocean State Massage Therapy, <coughs> Lemur's Body sh uh, Barbershop, Finer, finer details, Rich Bertie's on time delivery, um, new, what the hell are they? Mm. <laughs> JK West Warwick Corporation, JK West Warwick uh, Corporation, JK West Warwick Corporation, uh, Family Dollar Store, and renewal for rooming house licenses have all been approved, and January business licenses have been approved. Uh, Dave, was there one on there, Padula Builders? No. No. That was That's on, on the, the license. One. That was on the last one. I recused myself, right? Yeah, that was on the last All one. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah. Consent agenda correspondence. Resolved that the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to the proper departments and being disposed are waiting recommendation the same as hereby approved. I'll move the resolution. Second the resolution. Move and second. Any discussion? Just a couple of things further down the agenda, that's all it is. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Cancellation of taxes. Resolve that the attached cancellation in the amount of $40,109.97 presented to the tax assessor for approval of the town council in accordance with Article 25, Section 5 of the West Warwick Court of Ordinance is hereby approved. Original list is on file with the Office of the Tax Assessor. I'll move the resolution. Second the resolution. Move and second. Any discussion? Any public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Petition number Rhode Island 2016 26 on behalf of Verizon New England Inc. and Narragansett Electric Company to install one new pole on the east side of North Pleasant Street. Move the resolution. Second. Move and second. Um, I took a ride by here. Is this for that new audience. development over there? Because I, I couldn't tell by the pictures on here. I mean, they show like a side road, but it doesn't go. It only shows like ten feet. So that's for that new development going up on North Pleasant. Yeah, going in there. And there's there's several more that will be coming. And Joe's been, as you know, has been um, working very closely to get all the double poles addressed and the holes and all those things. And they they've been complying very well at this stage. And he feels. Comfortable with moving forward on the poles again so we can get these things cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, I, I was just trying to figure out where this was. I kind of figured it was on a new uh, development over there. Any other discussion? Public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance number 2016 15, first reading, sponsored by Council President Goslin, previously tabled <coughs> as amended in ordinance amending Chapter 10. Licenses and business regulations of the Code of Ordinance of the Town of West Warwick by adding thereto Article 13 Tobacco Dealers License and Sale Restrictions. I'll move the ordinance. I'll second. Move and second. Al, before we move on, um, John, you want to check the audio? I'm getting 
uh, got a message saying, Mike, check, you guys are getting cut off. I don't know whether oh, this table? is on or off. Wait a minute, this was table, Dave. I, I make a motion to take it off the table. You got a second? I'll second. All in favor to put it back on the table? John. Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Now I'll move the ordinance. Al? Okay. Dave, you need Dave. a second and a vote again. I move the ordinance. Thank you. Oh, a second. No vote. Al? Dave, uh, we may, when I pre presented this to the council last time, a number of questions came up. So I mentioned to you a little earlier, what I did, I submitted it to you for your review. I have highlighted several things that I, I put in the ordinance, but they're really council decisions. So I think that if we could, I'd like to go through the questions I have to get a council decision if we can move forward to second reading. And then after I've done that, with some corrections or what have you, then to go back with any open questions the council might have. The first area is section 10-179, the license uh, required. In that, it state, in that section, it states that uh, the light, that everybody has to have a license, and it states that a fee will be set from time to time by the council uh, to be paid at the issuance of the license. As the council knows, at, it, when we come to second reading, whatever the council suggests tonight by way of a fee, I would have a resolution to put it in our fee resolution package. But I don't know what the council wants to set for the fee for the license. I can give guidance to the council only in that at present our fee schedule states that l businesses that are not otherwise covered, the license fee is $100 and $25 for annual licenses. Whatever the council uh, sets, that's, that's not mine, that's the council's decision. But if I can get guidance, then when I come back with the second reading, I would have a resolution prepared to that. So, so. Just, just so we make it clear, right now we have a business license in the town. It's $100 for the initial first time license. That's just to fill out all the information, get it in the database. And then it's a $25 a year renewal. I don't have a problem with that fee. I think it still should stay that fee on this that's, ordinance. As it's, I say, that's more, I'm more concerned about the fines if they break the law. So this is no addition. This is no additional fee. This would be no additional okay. fee. So, for instance, if uh, I'll just use breads and stuff, they have to come for a business license, which they probably already have. So now it's still uh, additional hopefully they do. Hopefully they do. In, in in the in the fee, in the fee, I think it's Appendix C. I'm not sure or Appendix B, whatever it is, there are some businesses that have specific license fees. And then there's a category that says, if you don't have a specific license fee, it's a, your business license is $100 to come and get your license, and then each year it's another $25. So that, that doesn't go in the ordinance. That goes in a resolution that I will submit to the council, but that's the council decision, not mine for the ordinance. So am I, am I to take it that the resolution should be a 125 annual? It would be 100, 100, 100 one time, 25 okay. annual, yeah. I will present that resolution when we come to the second reading. The next area is the failure to obtain a license. In both the failure to obtain a license uh, or not renew them, I guess it's not renew, that $250 that I put in was just I put that in because that's what several other communities had. And again, I put a number in for the council decision. That's not my, my job. Now, Paul, let me just clarify. Every business gets notified to renew? We do send out letters. Some people respond and some people don't. Okay. So, I mean, I don't, I don't have a how, problem. How, would we re how do we renew, like, if you already have a business license, how would we make sure that they get this license? When they, the next time that they come up, is that how it would happen? Or? Yeah, that's how we normally do it. I, th I think, Jason, that in this particular instance, uh, I don't know, when we first went to this process of the annual licensing and trying to get everybody to get a business license, we, the clerk's office had a tough time because they didn't know who the businesses were. I think a lot of the work here has been done by these students that they're going to give a, give the, the town clerk's office 
a list of these are the tobacco. We'll, we'll send them out to do it. <laughs> so the, I think the town, the town clerk's office is going to have a, a, an advantage in this situation that they know who's selling tobacco. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then what I, as again, I said that if you don't come in and get the license within uh, 90 days from the notice, it's a $250 fine. And if you don't renew it, it's $250 fine. Again, the $250 is not my business, that's yours. Does anybody have a problem with that fee? I don't. No, no. Seems reasonable. The next area in which I have, uh, if my arthritic fingers would work. <laughs> Thanks Does it bother money. you when you count money out? What? Does it bother <laughs> you when you count money? No, it's my mother gave me all her arthritis, but she also gave me her 93 years of life, so I'm not complaining. Uh, That's what he just said. Okay, section 10-183. This was a question that was raised by chief, the chief. The section in there, again, I took from another ordinance, that no licensee shall sell or possess with intention of selling a tobacco product to another person who appears to be under the age of 27 without first examining the identification of the recipient to confirm that recipient is not under the age of 18. I think that should just be stricken and yes. that it's leave it up to them to determine whether they're 18 or not. I mean, how's they gonna know whether they're 27? 27, what's 27 got to do with it? I don't know where it came from. It's like it's a number, it's just like a... Anybody who's bartended, that's what they say. Yeah. Look, if, they're older, if they look older than 27, don't cover. Okay. If they look 27 and younger, you may want to cover. Yeah, anybody who has, is TIP certified or anything oh, like that, that's what, that's what they teach you. Is that where it comes from? That's, that's exactly where it comes from. Well, I had from. no idea and because... So, I walk in, <coughs> I'm not getting caught. <laughs> Tim walks in, he might get caught, you know, but... Um, <laughs> Mr. D'Amico will get caught. He'll get caught. He, he might pass for 27. So, if you, you want to leave it in, I don't have that's, a problem. That's just, okay. that's just part of the ordinance. The, it's, it's just the, something that's, that follows the liquor, too, as long as tobacco. The next area is in section H of that same section. And that deals with the uh, flavored tobacco. And we apparently have somebody in the town who is selling flavored cigars. Mm -hmm. And there was a concern of saying, well, kids aren't going to buy cigars, and this is going to put me out of business. And what, it, what the ordinance as it presently stands is, it says no licensee shall sell flavored tobacco products to a consumer, again, I took that from other communities. My suggestion to you is change it to someone under the age, not to sell it to anybody under the age of 18. Correct. And that, that will take, I would think, takes care of his. And also when it comes to the, and I don't know whether we have any in the town or not, but these tobacco bars or whatever you call them where people go and <coughs> smokes uh, cigars, that's excluded by state statute, and I've got that provision in there. The, uh, the final area is the enforcement fines and costs. Uh, first, in section C of that, I, when I submit it to Paula, there is a typographical error that I will correct that says in slash your, it should be and or. I will take care of that when I submit it. As far as the... Uh, that is section 10185. Uh, the chief has contacted me with a concern about, it presently says all licensees shall be subject to a compliance check at least twice a year. The chief would like that change to uh, the licensees may be subjected to a uh, license check of up to twice a year instead of making it mandatory on his department. So that way there, if they have the time and whatever. Well, and it goes on to say that if there's, there's, if there's uh, violations, they can do it more often. Yep. But this is, this, this is so that the police department has the right to go in twice a year if there's been no violations. What the chief did not want was they had to go in twice a year. He said, if we got 30, that means he's got to make 60 some visitations a year. So he just wanted the council to change that to May be subjected twice a year. The only 
thing that makes me nervous, and, and I understand the chief on that aspect of it, the only thing that makes me nervous is selective enforcement. Um, who determines what stores, and let's say they never go to one, just like kind of like the sewer inspections. They might not inspect a place for four years. Uh, uh, is there going to be some sort of list held? So in, in other words, if they don't get to that year or even one that year, would that be a priority to follow it? That would be the question I have. That way, they, you know, because if Jerry's supermarket gets it 10 times, Fred's and stuff gets zero, you know, and... Well, I, that, I think... Is that, that going to be something on record of who gets it inspected? It's, it is record? limited to twice a year. Yeah. So I no one can have more than two. No, but I'm saying within a, I understand within a five years. No, I, I understand what you're, you're coming from. I mean, that's, I'm just presenting to you what the, what the chief, chief's concern was when he contacted me on it. Okay. It's mandatory they go in once a year, correct? No, he said no. It's well, why not, can't we stipulate be, at least one a year? I, they should be, I, I feel it should be at least one a year. But maybe the second is again, uh, again, that's you know, at, at their you know, leisure. They, they, they make that determination if they think they need to go a second to, time. Subject to, subject to an annual check. Subject to an annual check, <laughs> and then it goes on to say <laughs> the violators being double. checked more frequently. So that what what you, I think it was. No, I understand that they do the same thing they do that with alcohol. But again, I just want to make sure well, that everybody's getting treated fairly. So I think one time a year, and then 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 should I provide that they will be the subject to an annual check, yeah. and violators subject to more. That sounds yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's 30, 30 is the number? Well, I think with the... Uh, and you can also, and Al, you can respond, the police department can also respond. For instance, if one of these children are in that store and they see it, and they let an adult know or the police department know, then we can respond anytime at that point. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's in the, there's a violation. The next two sections, the uh, check, section C and section D, when I first presented it to the council, there was a lot of question about the crazy provisions that I had submitted for penalties that I had taken from other ordinances. This is the statutory language uh, of what, what the state gen general laws say for penalties, uh, and I just copied it in. And if that's what the, I don't think the council can go greater than that. I don't think that's, terribly out of line. Uh, the council could go less, but I, I personally w would not recommend that. So, so, I'll, so for example, thing. in section two, whereas in section three, we have a fine of $1,000 and a 14-day suspension. We couldn't add in and say section two, a fine of 500 and a seven-day suspension. If this Is this like because mandated by the state or you say it goes less? Third, that's their third offense also. Well, that's their third, but why not be tougher be on the second? Because the state law says if a, a fine of 500 for second offense within a 36-month period, I would feel very uncomfortable if the council made it stronger than state than statute. State. I'd, yeah. I'd defer to Tim on that. I think that if the council made it less any, than... Any challenge by a uh, store owner of a violation of this, that the first thing they'll bring up is why is there a difference between the state and the uh, local ordinance and why give them an avenue to appeal when they don't want to. So so basically we can go with this or yeah. less? Yeah, I, I, that that I would be my opinion. No, I, I would not recommend it. I don't think you can go less. I think it, yes, generally yeah. what I've seen it, with respect to regulatory state regulations and fines and um, you can be more strict, but you can't be less strict. That's generally the way it's, th no, that's you're, my experience. You're, you're, you're better off leaving it as out. As it is, it. correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to amend it or change it in the future to see how things are going? You can always do that. Mm -hmm. If you require enabling legislation, that could be also done. But if we're going to be the first town that's going to enact this ordinance, and then other towns are going to follow suit, then you're going to have a wave of, you know, stuff at the General Assembly saying it'll be easier to get the enabling legislation. But okay. right now, how many communities have a subs uh, local ordinance? Well, there's, there's a number, but they're, they're all over the lot in what so they cover, Tim. So you're, you're better off keeping yeah, it. I, I would, I would, I would. time being, keep it yeah. general to where it is with the statute. Then if we can amend it, we'll amend it in the future. I mean, it, it, if somebody challenges it, we can just say, look, that's what the state law says. We didn't come up with this. That's what the state law said. I would, if, if the council said to me, what's your recommendation? 
as we did. My recommendation is stay, stay with the state, what the state law said. Okay. So you could, the state you supersedes town anyway. But you could also take a look at 6, 9, 12 months to see <coughs> what's yeah. happened as a result of this ordinance. Um, well, that's the other question I have. As far as the fines, would they be kind of like bars and uh, liquor establishments where they would have a show cause hearing? Yeah. They, they, they go to the municipal court. Yep. How, how, when, when all this is set in place, how is the, uh, how the business going, business is going to get notified? Is that going to be through? Well, the, number one, this has already been advertised. It, it, notice has been published. Yep. When you go to second hearing, it will be advertised. And then if the council wants to make known, they can just, you know, give you some newspaper publicity. And I got a feeling that these yeah, youngsters yeah. are going to let people know that we got it. They, they've been, they've been so, trying. So also what uh, SAD has done, uh, Students Against Destructive Decisions <coughs> has done, is provided a list to the town of every establishment. So we can take this ordinance and with a little synopsis of it and send it out to those, to those individuals, thirds. give them a 90, because we're going to give them a 90 day notice and they're going to be well informed <coughs> so you know they have 90 days to comply so they'll so all get mailed notice <coughs> they'll all get mailed notice but the legal exactly. notice provisions have already been complied with by putting it in the newspaper and giving them the opportunity to come in and testify either for or against it okay. or even suggest any changes what, w if the council passes this as amended tonight and when i say as amended i'll make the changes and give it to paul so that when we come up in a couple of weeks you will have all of the changes we've made tonight That'll be the second reading. That will be advertised in the newspaper that this is coming up, a tobacco license dealer ordinance. Okay. Uh, so that they, they, and that, once that happens by state law, that's notice to the world. Okay. And you know, I have to say that uh, Kimberly Maine and the, they, they they've been incredible with the assistance and the, the help they've given me and, and the guidance and what's going on here. But I, I I feel that we've come up with a pretty good product here for the council to go forward with. Uh, any other questions the council has, I'll try to resolve. Um, forgive my ignorance, but in D, what is a Lucy? A loose cigarette. You never heard is of that Lucy? Is? A loose cigarette. A loose cigarette. Okay. Yes. All right. It's a Lucy. It's a Lucy. <laughs> um, and, we, and we've had stores who have sold single cigarettes, unfortunately. Um, but there was nothing protecting or um, stopping them from doing that. So I checked it out. I had the same question. Did you? You're a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the reason behind that that we don't have Lucy's? To, tobacco is to be sold. You gotta remember when tobacco is sold, yeah. it's sold and licensed and stamped. Okay, that stamp okay, okay. Tax is, stamp. is a tax stamp uh, on a full pack. Right, makes sense. So <laughs> for you to sit there and, and, and sell a single cigarette out of a pack is illegal by state okay, and sure. it makes sense. federal. Yeah. It's almost like uh, the Indian tribe selling cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't go buy a bottle of alcohol in your store and serve shot by shot. <laughs> you know, it's it's same thing with cigarettes. And you could call a bar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I know, and I, unfortunately, I was unable to make the last meeting. I think uh, Major Knott was there with Major McGarra, um, along with Kim Main and group. And they actually had another dinner slash uh, get together and discuss what changes they'd like to see. And I think, Al, you've incorporated almost everything that I tried to see. Um, one of the things that was brought up to m me via, I know it was sent to you and myself, was the fines. Do the fines go stay into the municipal? Um, <coughs> portion and, and let it come in as revenue or do we put it back in the police department to keep this going i uh, i personally funding. would not want to see that in your ordinance okay. i would rather see that and i'll yeah. refer to fred on that by some budgetary uh, i would think budgetary that an allocation of these fines going to a defined account as opposed to putting it in an ordinance that uh, if it's a <coughs> if you put that in an ordinance, first thing defense counsel is going to say, 
is that you're going out and entrapping people. You don't want to put that in your ordinance because yeah. now it looks like it's a town money maker. So, but as far as budgetary, it would be the same thing as traffic stops for the municipal. Yeah, I will. We don't know how many they're going to be in a year, but if there are penalties, <coughs> then it's a little money. No, I just, that, that question was good. I, I, and that's the same thing with liquor. It goes back in the general. Yeah, I, I would not want to see it in the ordinance as to uh, it being said to us. As the, whatever the council wants to do with it, that's your business, but I wouldn't want to put it in the ordinance. Yeah, there's definitely an issue there. All right. Does anybody from SAD want to speak on that? If there are any changes or anything you'd like to see? I know uh, you've worked very hard on this ordinance with us. Just state your name for the record. I'm Zoe Morrow. Alan, you should have had it that low for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to feel bigger than what he was. No. <laughs> and I'm Kimberly Main. Okay, we just wanted to make sure that the flavored... Just speak into the mic so I, I can hear you. Okay, we just wanted to make sure the flavored products are, like, incorporated into all this. Yes, the flavored products are. It's, um, and again, we're looking to make sure they're behind the counter. Um, the only thing is we're not stopping them from selling the flavored products. But they'll adults, go behind the adults. counter? To adults, yeah. They have to be behind the they counter. They cannot be sold to anybody under 18. And they'll be behind the counter, right, Alan, this audience? Yes. And then I had a question about, let me see. It is Section 10-183, Section H, the um, – I'll added smoking bars in there. Should also retail tobacco stores be added in there? Because Doyle's is a retail tobacco store, correct? Say that again. The subsection that says they shut this this ordinance should not apply to a smoking bar. That would be a hookah bar or somewhere that they're they're smoking. Should we also put in their retail tobacco store? I mm. believe Doyle's would be the the Havana. Cigar bar would be a retail It's not really store. a cigar bar, though, right? So he, he is selling to the general public, and this ordinance would will prevent the sale to anyone over the age of 18, and also it's telling him where to place his product. If you were to enforce upon, <coughs> he, he closes business. Well, that's what we don't want to do. We right. don't want to force. So the flavored stuff is going to be behind and cannot be sold to anyone under the age of 18. <coughs> Well, first okay. of all, you wouldn't be in there anyway because it's a right. liquor store. Yeah, so yeah. True. they wouldn't be any minors. Yeah, you, don't, be you, allowed. Yeah, you can be a minor and go you can buy store. A, yeah, they sell soda too. If you're with and adults. Chips. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We just wanted to. Me to the six pack. Our goal was we didn't <laughs> want to affect that. No, it, it's not our no, it's, it's not our purpose. It's more of the convenience stores it's that have it out there. We wanted to make sure they weren't going to be affected because that would be fair. It's only if you do not sell under 18. That's a little different. Thanks. Thank you. And I, I'd like to again thank you to the teachers and everybody and the students who brought this forward. Um, well, I, I, I got to say, um, on my 10 years on the council, I think this is the most involvement I've seen with this type of ordinance, with children especially being involved in the amount of hours in time that they have put in and even after school hours that they've put in and work on this ordinance so um and, and bring it to our attention um the, you know I, I, I know i remember the first meeting that you brought it up here and then the second meeting at the um youth center and after i left the youth center that night i, I couldn't do i couldn't go without doing anything and and i thought this would be great <coughs> knowing that the hard work that you've done that it shows that when you're involved, you can make changes. So good job to everybody, and, and congratulations on that. Um, with that being said, any other public comment? Roll call vote, Jason? I agree. Yes or no? Yes. Angela? Yes. Jay? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. That's first reading. Thank you. Ordinance number 2017-1, first reading, sponsored by Councilman Padula, an ordinance amending 
Appendix C, Traffic Ordinances of the Court of Ordinances of the Town of West Warwick. I'll move the ordinance. I'll second the ordinance. Move and second discussion, Al? That came out of the last traffic committee meeting that uh, they took care of Providence Street with a two-hour parking between 10 and 6, Stevens and Brookdale, the sharp curve ahead, uh, Vincenzo, the stop sign. The two ordinances, 10,008, 10,010-8, and 10,010-9 10 that I'm repealing, those were for the East Avenue Bridge. It's now complete, so they, we didn't need them anymore. And the traffic uh, committee requested that they be repealed. Any questions for Al? <coughs> Any public comment? This, the parking on Providence Street, is that for Messies? That was well, for Dewey's. 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 No, Dewey's. Not Dewey's. 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 We're just not going to. We're, we're going to have it in there, whether it's enforced or not. If the, the next business, we don't know what's going in there. Okay. So, and it's only going to be uh, for a short time, not for, and I discussed it with the major that they were going out of business and they were still open till the last week. So um, it already went through the trap. So I just figured we'd keep it in there. I could always bring it back and get it out if it's needed, need be, if uh, we have any problems with it. Any other questions? Public comment? What they're opening, doing something. Hearing none, roll call. Jason? Yes. Angelo? Yes. Jay? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. They're doing something. Ordinance number 2017-2, first reading, and ordinance amending section 8-12 of the Code of Ordinance of the Town of West Warwick. I'll move the uh, uh, ordinance. I'll second. Move and second discussion. Uh, I, go ahead, Al. On this one, what happened was Nicole found that while we did a change in the pickup of refuge, we made it at 6 o'clock in the morning. However, Nicole found there was another ordinance that said you can't pick it up until 7 o'clock. <laughs> so we're just changing the 7 to 6 o'clock. The only concern, something. Shut those things off. <laughs> something has happened recently over the past month. I, I have never gotten a complaint about coming too early for trash. But recently, and, and I just had a conversation with Dave on the hallway. He says they've been doing it for 6 a.m. But recently, I've received four complaints that they're coming earlier and earlier. So I think it's what's going to happen come spring and summer when people open their windows, 6 a.m. Is that going to be an issue with noise? And I just want to clarify because... If they've, if they've been coming at 6 a.m. all along, I, just read I can tell you they don't get to my house until almost 9, 10 o'clock sometimes. So I, I'm not... It's where you are on the route. Usually. It's where you are on the route. But if they're starting at 6 a.m., are they getting there at 5.30 and starting to slam these barrels around? And that's, and that's what I'm afraid of. You know, 7, I know we as a town, when we had the trash, they got to work at 6. By the time they started the route or whatever, or 7 o'clock, by the time they started the route, it was late enough. Also... People sometimes don't get their trash out at 5 a.m. They put it out the night before, or they put it out right before they go to work at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. And if, that, if that's the case, they've been coming earlier, or did they change the route and start going to a different neighborhood earlier? I don't know, but I, I've never had any complaints, but now all of a sudden I've gotten complaints. And then I see this pop up on the agenda without anybody knowing about it. So that's why I was wondering. Hey, it's me. Well, this isn't new. It's just you. we had made the decision when the program started in February to change it to 6 o'clock. And it has been, okay, you're right, I have received a few complaints of people that either weren't aware of the change of ordinance when it happened or that they were coming a little earlier, in which case I do communicate with Mike Noons. I talk to him daily. Uh, 11.30 is my time every single day. And we coordinate... Um, arranging pickups for those who have missed it, either because they didn't put it out on time, whether it was because of their fault or whatnot. Mike Nunes is really good at making the, going back and fixing that, resolving the issue. Um, my thing is if they are starting earlier than six o'clock, I don't know what you've got in the contract, but whether they'd be subject to some, a fine, a, an ordinance, a noise ordinance fine at that point, or I just keep badgering Mike News <laughs> at well, that and point. That's, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know if they were 
coming here at seven and all of a sudden they want to come here at six and make sure they're here at six, but if they're going to start at six, are they going to, in other words, are they going to be pulling in town at six or are they going to be pulling up to their first house at five, four, right. five fifteen happens. in the morning? You know, and all of a sudden you start slamming these barrels down. And, it, and right now, windows are closed, so people aren't going to start saying too much because they're probably not hearing it. You know, but come springtime at 5:45, they start hearing bang, but bang. But this, this has bang. been this. This was the ordinance all summer. Was six o'clock? I, I wow. do, that's the thing. I yeah. haven't received Big. one complaint right. all year. Over the past month, I've received four complaints, and now all of a sudden, this yeah, ordinance comes earlier. before me. So uh, were they coming at seven and now they want to come at six? What were they doing? I don't know. When, when this new contract. Or do they change the route or pick a different neck of the woods to start earlier and, they, and the people weren't aware of it? It's possible. When this new contract got awarded, we had a meeting in Fred's office and one of the things that they asked for was permission to start at six. Remember we discussed that and we thought it was fine. We didn't have a problem with it. and. Uh, but they're not starting in the neighborhoods at six. They're coming into town at six. And they pick up their, their uh, trucks and everything in East Providence and they drive in. So they get here six, five past six. And then they drive to the neighborhoods where they're, where they're starting working. And if you look at the new system, the truck is in front of the house for like 30 seconds, if, if that. Grabs the bucket, dumps it, puts it back down, and they're gone. But every time it goes down, you hear boom. Yeah, well, is it, if I'm not mistaken, did this come before the council? When, when, when you guys had the meeting with him and we said, no, not 6 o'clock, no. we wanted no. to no. no, you didn't it, say it, that. It you has, said it, you said it was okay. It 6 o'clock. It, it, it was changed in the audience. That sticks with me. I, 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 the I, only I thing recall, is there's, there was two different languages. Me too. That's why I was shocked when I saw this on the agenda because I know that was one of the concerns. We, we didn't let our town employees right. start right. at 6 a.m. because yeah, it was noisy. Our town employees had three guys on a truck. And they were manually dumping the cans, banging them on the back of the trucks to empty them and all that stuff. And that was making the extra noise. These guys asked because they're using one truck mm -hmm. and they need more time to service the neighborhoods and get, the, and get done and be able to answer. get to the, to the dump on time. Mm -hmm. And then when they have well, inclement weather, they want to be able to start <coughs> earlier to beat the storms. So 6 o'clock was But was Dave, fine. what I remember is because we brought up, and, it, and uh, my memory, I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast this morning. But I remember, and we were talking about 7 o'clock, and Giroux was right here, and then we said we don't even let our own guys, like David said, and the other thing was we have an ordinance that regular workers can't go out and start at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning either. When, well, I, I can answer. When the contract went into effect and I drafted an ordinance that came before the council, that ordinance said 6 o'clock. Yeah, well, yeah. We, we came yes. before the council. If you remember right, it, it, it with, was a, with a three list of questions. I remember, Dave, but I'm questions. thinking 7 o'clock. one of them was that. Yeah, and you guys said, okay, and then Al did the ordinance. Several well, readings. So put it. This, this is only coming up because up. we had two ordinances. Well, well what it is, with a, where the oh, difference is, was with the, the no, the difference was between what was passed as the trash ordinance and the noise ordinance allowing the trash to be there before. The correlation <clears throat> needs to match. Well, what I'd like to do before I even approve this tonight is I want to go back to <coughs> the minutes of the meeting that this happened and listen to the tape. And I, because I think Councilman Badul is 100% right. I, I, I think you did bring it to us at 6 o'clock, but I don't think we agreed to 6 o'clock. Yeah. I think it was brought up that, no, we don't want, because we know we're the ones who are going to get the phone call saying, you know, and that's exactly at 545, what five, and, and who's to say they're not coming 15 minutes earlier or, or where they're going? I don't know where they're starting their routes. I, I don't know what, what their routing system is. You would probably know that more than me. But um, I, I actually got a text message a few weeks ago and says, since when does garbage come before 6? So that tells me they were there before six well, because that person I know goes to work for six o'clock. If they're there before six, we'll talk to them late tomorrow. Morning. You know, and, and that's and so if we give them the leeway of six. They were on Wakefield Street last week at quarter past six in the morning, house to house. But that's that was that's according to the ordinance. At quarter past six. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fine. What time do they finish? Relatively each day. It depends how heavy it is mm -hmm. too, you know. And, but they got to go and they got to hit every can, so it right. takes probably. Talking 11, 12, 1? No. 30 to 45 seconds in front of each house. Yep. You're going to multiply that times, I think they're doing 1,200 households. Yeah. But, but what's this last 
part of it and says, no, no person shall pick up or remove, nor shall any person cause or allow to be picked up or removed any refuse, rubbish, a trash from any residential complex of, from any commercial or industrial establishment between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. if such establishment is located within 200 feet of dwelling. What does that mean? If the gar garbage can is 200 feet from the dwelling? That's for commercial. Yeah, we just changed the time. So they're saying that if, if you have a, like the business park, for example, if there's, if there's one of the buildings is within 200 feet of a residence, they can't have the trash picked up before six. Before six. Is what that says. And that was already in there. So again, you're saying if it's within 200 feet, it shouldn't be picked up? That's just for the commercial establishments, they're saying. If, if, yeah. you're, if you're within that. Well, it says from 10 a.m. Commercial industrial. Residential complex. Correct. Or any Apartments. commercial yeah. industrial establishment. Correct. So, so, so that covers the private ones, <coughs> and the rest of it covers the town ones. <coughs> But then, in this ordinance, it says placement is 6 a.m., which prohibits placement curbside prior to 7 a.m. It says not to put it out there before 7 a.m., but we're going to yeah. pick it up at 6 a.m. Right. No, 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 no. That's, the, the new ordinance says that's, that, was, that was the discretion. Well, the new ordinance says, says it right here in this right ordinance. Well, I'm that's reading not, it. That's not right. I've been out. I didn't see it. That's, that's not right. The new ordinance states that you can put your trash in recycling but 24 again, hours ahead of time. Right. Because we changed it from 12 to 24 right. to give people more time to get it out there. See that? In, in the last ordinance. That, that one is going to have to be changed. Mm -hmm. Well, it says yeah. conflict. So personally, I'd like to table this, but that's up to you guys. Yeah, I, 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 I feel agree. like I want to do it too. I agree. Well, it was, yeah, because we I can know. pull up all the ordinances and find right. them. And I'm gonna yeah. I, I'm gonna make a motion to table it till we listen to the me the, the minutes. Second. Give me a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's been tabled. Thank you. <laughs> so can we clarify what is it right now then? What's the time right now so people know? It's still right so now. They're still, still coming at six a.m. Okay. We're gonna confirm. Just want to be clear when somebody asks. We're gonna confirm what we agreed upon. Okay. And That's fine. We'll get right you the minutes also. Okay. All right. If we agreed upon it at 6 a.m., then we agreed right upon it at 6 a.m. I don't remember agreeing to that. Reappointment of tree warden resolved that the town council hereby reappoints the following individual to serve as the tree warden for the town of West Warwick per state recommend, uh, requirement for the Department of Environmental Management. I'll move the, uh, what is it, a resolution? Yeah. I'll move the resolution. I'll second the resolution. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I know the appointment. No the name's point. not on here, yeah. but no it's um. Page. There's no second page. There's no, no second I didn't get page. that. The, it's um. Mark McGarrah. McGarrah. Uh, Mark McGarrah. He's been. He's the only one that put in. He's been our tree warden ever since I can remember, and it's a free. He's not getting paid for it, and he's got to have a certain license with DEM. So Arbor. I'll move the yeah. I'll move the um name of uh, Mark McGarrah. I'll second that. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes, ayes. <coughs> Appointment for an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Review. Resolved that the Town Council hereby appoints the following individual to serve as an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Review for the Town of West Warwick with the term to expire on July 2020. I'll move the resolution and the name of Richard Banks. I have to recuse myself because Richard is a family member of mine. Do I have a second? Second? <coughs> Discussion. Um, just to give you a heads up, we do have a second application. Yeah, that came in at the 11th hour. No, I'm just, that actually came in at 1221. It would have had to be, this would have had to been, uh, it was, how long was that? Did you advertise that? Three times. Three times, and this come in at the 11th hour. I don't know, how, I know Dennis very well, he's my neighbor, but like I say, I don't know what's going on. I don't like what's going on. That this, I got this as I sat here. So I'll move the name of Richard Banks. Well, there's nothing really going on, Council Padula. I'm just saying. We've yeah, well, I mean, I've never seen David. We've done this before. I've had applications come in. Not at the 11th have. hour. Yes, we have. Never, never voted on that because, I'm as a matter of fact, vote on it. I'm just saying, is a second, yeah. a second application, so everybody's aware. The application came in. It was after the time. It, it, 
that they closed. It was 1221 today. I'm just, just saying we have a second application. I'm just connecting the dots. Well, can I, puzzles, um, I guess. I'm not sure. Can I also make note that at the December 6th meeting, and you can look at the record at about one hour and 25 minutes in, I asked the question because we, we needed to put forth the name of someone as an alternate. And I knew of people who were interested. And it was told to me, because I asked the question to the solicitor, does the alternate have to be of that particular party? And then Councilman Padula asked, or can they be unaffiliated? And we were told specifically that that person had to be a Republican. So as far as I know, Mr. Banks is not a Republican. He is unaffiliated, but not a Republican. And when it, it had states, to be, you have no more three. than three of the members of said board shall at any time be members of the same political party, and one of the auxiliary members shall be from each of the two major political parties. And we, on the, the meeting of the 20th, we filled the Democratic position with Justin Kutu. Because that's the third appointment for the Democrat which had control, which really didn't have control, but it had, it's got control as, as we speak. But the second one, I disagree that an unaffiliated or an independent that you can't put in because he's neither a Democrat nor a Republican, or he could say whatever he is. It's like it says two major parties. There's really three major parties. And this was written, how about the cool moose? That's a party. You're not, yeah, but it's not, it's not, not saying party. that. It's, it says the, the two major political we, parties are Republican and Democrat. We have put, if you look back, in a Republican or a Democrat position, we have put independents or unaffiliated in the place of that. I can't recall when, but there was numerous appointments that were made that we appointed an independent. And again, two. I... And Angel, I just want to make it clear. I, I have nothing wrong with this appointment. I spoke to Richard today, uh, Rick Banks today, um, had a lengthy conversation about other things also, and I just want to clarify, Al or Tim, does it have to be a Republican? Because I don't want to appoint somebody and then two weeks from now have to say, sorry, we appointed you, but you're not supposed to be there. Because we have done that. We've put people on who've had state jobs or whatever, and we discussed it and said, oh, it's fine. And then two months later, we find out it wasn't fine. If I uh, there are, just there, are that. there are two categories in the zoning board. One of the five members. What your charter says as to the five members is they can be no more than three from any one party. The zoning, uh, your charter uses the term auxiliary member. We've always called them alternate members. What that says is that the, uh, the alternate members there must be one from each major party. Now, as I've said in discussion with others, my only concern with that charter is it was drafted probably in 1965 or whenever, or whatever, when, when, there were, when there were major parties. Today, we have, I don't think when the charter was drafted, you had as many other parties or entities. I'm not gonna advise the council on that. Gonna pass that buck to Tim. <laughs> but let me, let me ask one question, Tim, before you answer this. If five appointees were all independents, what would the major party be? If this council consisted of three independents, what would the major party be? There would be no major party. Okay, so. However, facts as they are right now, I believe there are three Democrats, and there are two Republicans as the full members of the zoning board. That's, that's, that's right the zoning, now. I don't know, I think there's three and two, three and two. on the zoning board itself, right. not the alternates, on no, no, the no. alternates. <coughs> I'm just, that's why I'm doing it right now, yeah. factually. Yeah. There are three Democrats, there are two Republicans. Right, I, I don't know. The alternates, and I've been here almost 20 years now, the alternates on zoning, nothing to do with planning or other boards where there have been unaffiliated and whatever you want to call them, independents. But for zoning purposes, the two alternates have always been a Republican or a Democrat. In order for the Republican to fill the Republican seat and the Democrat to fill the Democrat seat. 
So, so, so when you read this, no, but then you have four of one party. No, no, no. When you no. have one sitting, one, one, if, if that's Angelo, what I was going to ask, if Angelo Padula is sitting as a Republican, all excuse me, Republican member of the zoning board, and he is not in attendance, then the Republican alternate would take his place. No, no, that's, that's not true. That's the way we do it. No, just it's it, that's right. Alf, tell him. No, I, I, I was on. Guys, I'm not done. Okay. Because if two people are missing, the two alternates would replace. The, the, part, the procedure on the zoning you have to have a quorum, correct? The procedure on the zoning board has been that if there's somebody missing this week and the it ha alternate A sits and somebody's missing next month, alternate B sits. When they, when they move to fill it, fill it up, it, we've never done it by party affiliation. We've alternated back and forth so between. So the, the intent of the statute hasn't been followed by the zoning board? Because that's, uh, that was yeah. a question I was going to ask. The, the, yeah. intent, the intent of the ordinance for zoning, because this happens in other cities and towns yeah. too, where it's more prevalent and not as either nonpartisan or bipartisan, is the fact <laughs> that when you have a Republican member of the zoning board, and it's very specific to zoning board, okay. if that Republican member cannot sit, normally the Republican alternate sits. Same thing with the Democrat. Now things get a little dicey if, say, both... Uh, to say two Democrats don't go to the meeting and you need five for a quorum because there's going to be a vote and now you've got the table shift so the three to two uh, Democrat uh, Republican majority now gets shifted because now you've got more Republicans sitting but the issue has always been why is it partisan and why should it be not partisan right. but the statute that we have to look at is section 1606 and it says and again I, I agree this is horribly drafted. No more than three of the members of said board shall at any one time be members of the same political party and one of the auxiliary members shall be from each of the two major political parties. Right now there are stu still two major political parties in the country, the state, and the town, that being Republican and Democrat. And cool move, so there's three. But there's no cool moves. Applicant. No, there's no applicant, but there's not two parties. There's three parties, number one, so that's wrong. And well, number two, we we added, Tim, number two, we added, we only had five, wait a minute, I got the floor here. There was five, there was five appointments. We, you brought it to the old council, we gave you guys two alternates because you were having a problem having a quorum, and we never updated that charter, or the way it was, we didn't specify that it had to be a Republican or a Democrat. We said we're going to give you two more alternates. Would that be sufficient? You said yes. This count, not this council, the last council, maybe before the last council, well, me, Dave, and Ed were here anyway, and we voted to give you guys two alternates so we wouldn't have to put the people out. It was going to cost them a lot of money. I think there was always two alternates when I, when I no. came on. No, no there wasn't. Yeah, it's, there's always, since been, I, since there's always I, been seven. And, and, since, since, since and I, what do we give you? What do we give you? Well, since 2004 that I've been here, the council has had five plus two alternates. Yeah, because when we I came on the council, the, I used to go to the zoning amendment, meetings. There's always the seven. The charter amendment is going to add two more as soon as the General Assembly passes the enabling legislation. But what I'm getting at is right now, I'm not disagreeing with you about the No, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just trying to get my point across. The, I know, but the point the, is it says of the two major political parties, <laughs> The two major political parties are Republicans and Democrats, not cool moose. But it's wrong. I'm, I'm not. That, when that was made to me in 1986, like you said, it was never amended. When, when the cool moose come in. Right, but the when, only thing we have to interpret he, is this. And that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, but it, it, you're, you're, you're an attorney. If, if, if I wanted to turn cool moose and put in my application right away, why couldn't you put my name down? Because you'd have to prove cool moose is a major party, and it's not. They did. The state already approved no, it. They got so many percent no, of the vote. No, Healy's the one that brought that up. I understand what you're saying. But if you looked at the last election, was there a cool moose party? There was no one running. Was there a cool moose party? I don't, I don't, I, no. I didn't follow it. So the question Maybe is, next year I'll run as a you, cool moose you, and we'll have it. <laughs> you're asking the question, what are the two major political parties in the town of West Warwick? It's Republican and Democrat. In the state of Rhode Island, it's Republican and Democrat. In the country, it's Republican and Democrat. That's the two major parties. So, can I you have evidence that I'm not going to disagree with you on the major parties. That's why I passed it over to you. Uh, 
I, where I would have, do have a, a disagreement is when you said that if the Republican is, the Republican regular member is not sitting, we have to move the Republican alternate well, up. What I said was that was the intent. That was it, but right. the, re the reason we have not followed that is because if you have both Republicans not, uh, not showing up, then we're gonna take the Republican and Democrat so it throws that no more than three right. off anyway. So, I understand. so we, in, 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 all, in fairness, we've done one this week, one next month, one right. next month. Well, you would agree that in 2017. I would agree that the it ordinance should, is a mess. It should be nonpartisan. Okay, but, yes. but, it, but this is, it's not nonpartisan. No, I agree. Is gentlemen, this, is, this is my concern with this board right now, from what I'm seeing sitting here. What you're basically telling me is somebody who could be very well qualified, but they're unaffiliated, Right. Not part of any major party, yeah. they can't serve on this board. Right. I think it's a mess. I because can't serve me as pers an alternate. Well, on, here's on. my problem. Yeah, sure. Most this alternates this has come on to past. learn. This right. has happened in the past where we had a declared candidate get the position as a Republican, and Switch. while she was on the board, she became unaffiliated. And there was nothing the council could do right. because she had been appointed as a Republican. She was always counted as a Republican for purposes of the zoning board because of the political issue. However, but Angel, you bring up the issue. If nobody ran or nobody wanted to be appointed and they were all unaffiliated, you're right. But here's the problem. How does this council violate the... It's been violated. It's, you're, not, you're violating it whether you go by that charter no. or whether you go against zoning, it, as Al said. No, but zoning has never had a person appointed as an unaffiliated or an independent. Other boards and commissions, yes, but zoning has always been Republican and Democrat. And I recall one time when a Democrat was trying to put in for an alternate on a Republican position, we ended up in Superior Court. Mark Fleury represented the Republican Town Committee, indicating that it's a statute, which is the, the, the or, uh, excuse me, the charter, that a Republican had to be picked for that alternate spot. Can I um, so make a comment? So if, if Mr. Banks gets chosen as an unaffiliated, nobody challenges it? Okay. If there's an adverse ruling. There's a lot. If there's an adverse ruling at the uh, at the zoning board that gets appealed to the superior court, that adverse ruling may result in his unaffiliated position being challenged. Or if nobody challenges it, I mean, business goes on as <coughs> usual. Then the, the ordinance would get uh, straightened out, and so would the charter. Well, again, I, I don't disagree with you. The, the no, language I understand. is just, it's horrible. Before Richard, John. Well, I just wanted to comment on like an 11th hour application um, just for transparency, Mr. Banks was my opponent. Richard, you deserve to serve on a board. Um, you know, nobody's going to keep you from serving. However, this was brought up last month. I asked a specific question. Because of the answer I got, I told someone else that they sh probably shouldn't apply because they were unaffiliated. And I was told it had to be a Republican. So someone didn't get the opportunity to put in an application, which I don't think is fair. Well, there's so, and the other thing other is, we had Ignorance the holidays. For the law. Well, this this is what's in writing. This is what was told to us by the solicitor. I don't believe what I'm told. I always do it's what I feel video. like doing it. One hour and twenty five minutes in, we were told. You believe that? No, I know you. you. That? Shame no, on I, you. I believe you. I know. Like I told you, five thousand have an opinion, and you have attorneys that have opinions. I, 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 want I get the law. that. I get that. I point. get that. But you know, it's in our charter. It was told to us by the solicitor. Um, it was the holidays. I mean, these things aren't well publicized. It seems like fair opportunity wasn't given to everyone. And, you know, as I said, you have the right to serve. And, and it's, it's a tough situation because I was your opponent, and it probably looks like I'm keeping you from this. But based on the information that we were given and what we have, as an unaffiliated, you shouldn't be serving. It should be a Republican. This is where my confusion comes in. That Just ball. adjust that microphone. I'm a little bit tall. <laughs> okay, so we can have an unaffiliated serve on that board because if I look on the website, it states that we have an unaffiliated person on that board. It also lists this vacancy as r slash u, which to my understanding- That's right, that's the way it's advertised. Is unaffiliated. That's the way it's advertised. Mm -hmm. So if that's not correct in the ordinance or if there's an issue with that, it shouldn't have been advertised that way. And second of all, um, you know, you were my opponent. 
things worked out the way they did. You're on the council, I'm not, and I have no problem with that. What I'd like to do is serve this community in some form, and I would not like to be withheld to I would not like to be held back from doing so because I followed the deadlines of application, I followed the process correctly, and somebody may not have because you didn't have a chance to tell them. I don't believe that's fair to me, having followed the process and done everything the way that I'm supposed to. I agree, Richard, 100%, I agree. And um, the, 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 the issue I see here with the unaffiliated portion of it, majority of our members who are serving on that board right now were, if not at one time, an alternate. And it's more for the learning curve of the zoning board. It might have been one or two, but a lot of them go down the list right now. Um, Bob Messier wasn't. Bob Messier wasn't. Peter Thompson wasn't. Deborah Zuckerman wasn't. Right. We should have. Uh, uh, I can Alvin, never say uh, Al Alvaric was. Alvaric was. Uh, and Nick Phillips was not. Phillips wasn't, uh, wasn't alternate. No. no. <clears throat> I don't think so. I think he's spread out. I'm not positive, but I think I know Bob, Peter, and Deborah went right on without yeah. serving as alternates. Mm -hmm. I don't think Mike was an alternate. I'm not positive that. Alan was that was the uh, that was the Republicans. Uh, and again, uh, candidate for it. going by what I feel is sometimes an alternate, and I and I <coughs> took that consideration with Justin Kutu, where he doesn't have all the knowledge right now of the zoning board, but being an alternate and attending these meetings and learning that he'll work his way up, eventually somebody's gonna come off that board, whether it's due to retirement or just moving on or doing whatever, that Justin will be ready. And I don't have, and I, I, again, unaffiliated Republican, Democrat, I, I think that's probably one of the craziest ordinances I've ever heard on the council that if you've got qualified people, I might have two unqualified Republicans, but they put their name in and by rights, they yeah, should be on there. When I could have five unaffiliated builders and zoners that <coughs> done this in their whole life, but we can't put them on because they, they're not allowed to be on. Dave, I think, and, and this is from my past knowledge of the town, I think if you look at the time frame, when that was drafted. It was sort of from the very toilet of the town uh, since 1913. Mm -hmm. And I think when this was drafted, it was drafted because of the political nature of the town. I have another question that comes up with the agenda that you've got that under this section, you point that the zoning board is for the zoning board of review, and then you've also got a, as an upcoming appointment. I don't know how that affects it, but you've got uh, for the Yes, because yeah. up, upcoming yeah. appointments <coughs> will still, because if we didn't fill it tonight, it'd still be an upcoming okay. appointment. Right. And, but that where it states so on, now, where, where it states on the agenda, upcoming, once we it fill it, it that's going to come off. It, does, it doesn't say affiliation there, but once we fill it, the next agenda, that won't be on there. Okay, but it does not have any affiliation on that. All right, any other discussion? Because right now I have a motion on the floor for Richard Banks and I have a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Congratulations. Thank Good you. Good luck, Rich. Good job. Thank you. Discussion action proposed. FY 2018 budget line sponsored by Council President Gosling. Um, I put this on the agenda uh, based upon John Cimino emailing me looking for the schedule for the 2018 budget. Back in uh, um, back just just for the record, uh, Councilman Lachardi is back in the room. Back in December, we I didn't um, even know he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, back in the December, the first meeting of December, we had uh, Fred and I had uh, presented a, um, s a proposed schedule for the budget workshops and public hearings and whatnot for the upcoming uh, fiscal 18 budget. Uh, we're just looking to finalize those dates, or at least um, get close to finalizing them. And it is up to the council as to actually set those dates. So we're basically just looking to um, to get something that the council is um, comfortable with as far as the dates go, so that we can begin the uh, the process. 
I do have a copy you know, that I printed. If any of the council, you got a hard copy? I have a hard copy. Can I have one, please, John? I forgot my glasses. I can't read this. Thank you. You can zoom in with your fingers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hi, right, Dave. Wise guy. Wise guy. <laughs> well, can you, can you zoom can, in you, can you hear me now? I respect Thanks. all this, huh? Yeah, the, doc, the document that it was online, and I um, just handed a couple of copies out, hard copy, it basically goes through the whole process. Uh, the dates that we're looking for the council to set would be the actual workshops and the public hearings. There is some time still involved, you know, as far as it's not like the dates are coming up anytime soon, but it, it's always best, and we've I've found the last couple of years it was helpful to actually schedule the workshops ahead of time sometime in January. You got, I, so, you got some of these meetings the night of council meetings. Yeah, and I, I got a problem with the uh, first Monday of the month. I have a son of Italy I'm president of, and that I got a conflict right there. Uh, I don't care what Monday, as long as it's not the first Monday of the month. Yeah, the Mondays that you see on here were more deadlines than actual meetings for the council. Uh, the meeting, the meetings with the council would be Tuesday the 21st of March, Tuesday the 28th, which would be the two workshops, and then the two public hearings we have on here, April 4th and April 11th. So those are the four key dates. So the public hearing will be <coughs> April 4th meetings. is the council meeting. So what would that start at 6? Well, the public hearing typically in years past has we basically just been an opportunity for, the, for anyone to come if they didn't come to the workshop. Yeah, we always so had an hour before the, the budget. Yeah. Right. Okay, so it's not lengthy like the workshops. The workshops, you know, for the new council members involved, basically each of the departments being scheduled for a set date, not necessarily a time. We have a list of the departments. We go through one by one. They have a chance, you have a chance to ask them questions. They have a chance to discussion, to have discussions about what their requests were, or were versus uh, what the town manager may or may not have uh, submitted. So it's an open dialogue, open discussion. Um, those are lengthy and those have to be separate from the council because they in themselves can run two or three hours depending on which departments. I'm fine with these dates. We can change them if needed. Yeah, just um, again, again it's, just, it's just to get something, you know, right. on yeah, the schedule. Just that I mean, things are gonna pop up. It's just gonna... Dave, it's just that first one right off the bat is the sixth. And I don't want to miss I think you said that was that's just, just the deadline the draft submitted yeah. to us. That's, that's just the deadline. That's, the deadline. that's, that's not a meeting for us. That's, that's just the. That's just. Oh, all right, right. draft. All right, right. draft. All right. The ones I circled on there before. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I don't the have other the, the other question I do have with the all-day referendum. Them four. Um, <coughs> obviously, it's vote yes or no for the budget, but can we put some other things on that referendum, like charter changes? <laughs> yeah, we have in the past. And. Do you want to go through this charter now and get this stuff rearranged so we would have to actually have some sort of meeting to go over what we Mayor, want? Can I make a suggestion? You should have a separate workshop. That's what I mean. On the issue. That's what I mean. And then keep the changes to a minimum because the more yeah. you put out. No, you want to put two or three. But we, we already know there's one, one issue with right. the zoning. We also know that what didn't get put on the ballot last time was uh, seven members to the housing authority. Um, to Clyde Towers and Robert Street. That was supposed to go from five to seven. That did not oh, that's, happen. That's the seven I had in my mind. No, that, I knew there was one. <laughs> one Sorry, one Al. Went that <laughs> has to be, there's neighboring legislation that's required for pension, pension. the other one. Pension, Pen pension, pension and housing authority, I believe, yeah. the two. But one, one, one did make the ballot, one did not. Yeah. Uh, pension made the ballot. Well, they both made the ballot. I think they were no, both on the ballot. The housing did not make the ballot because there I were looked three at myself. Paul had emailed me three ballot uh, questions, one being the budget and two being right. the I'm additional I'm telling you, take boards. a look at the copy of the ballot. That was the first thing I got a phone call from uh, Clyde Towers and everybody saying, where's, where's this? Because that's what they were voting. That's what they, they went down not just to vote, but they were looking for that specific item. Yeah, because they all wanted a rep. I'll look at the ballot. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't on there. I went by the email you sent me, which yeah, was basically I went by when the resolution. Yeah. So we I asked for it to ballot. be on the ballot. Okay. And then, unfortunately, <coughs> we didn't get to some of the meetings, and then the... Um, yeah. What board's that? Ray Lambert's on. Board of Canvases. Board of Canvases. They approved the ballot, but we didn't see a sample of it until okay. afterwards. And we had people who the ballot was actually messed up even after they approved it, and they had to resubmit it. But they missed those two items, I think. So we'll have to go back and look at that. So as a council, if you have changes, for instance, like that ordinance, if we want to clean it up, I mean that uh, charter item, I think that's something we should get on the ballot and get it cleaned up once and for all so we don't run into issues like this. And that way there, if a council person does have somebody who wants to be on a, uh, a board, they don't have to tell them, no, you're not allowed because you're unaffiliated. Mm -hmm. And then we run into pickles like this tonight, mm -hmm. and it gets heated conversations and whatever else, and 
you know, some and not only that, like you said, you might have four people, three of them are real qualified, and they're, they're, they're not able to put their name in because of their affiliation. It, it doesn't make sense at all. Not if you have a good person are, who can serve. You got, there are several sections that are completely obsolete that really need well, to be Well, we could pick a couple yeah. and clean it up. Clean it right, it'll make it easy. You have to pick the whole charter. I mean, that's what we have a charter review for. We did that in 2010. So if we need to have another charter review by the next election, which is two years from now, maybe we start putting that in place. Well, my, yeah, that, that was going to be my question, too, is are, are you required to have a charter review in order yes. to, to do this? My, my suggestion, How many years? My suggestion. Not to make any change, I mean. No. So we might have to do it for the next election. Well, you may want to do it a little earlier because it says it's supposed to be every 10th year after the this was passed in 86. So you get 96. Yeah, there was a we had a charter review. review. In 2010. In 2006. Uh, we had one in 2010, too. Oh, wait, Mark Borgette was on it. He right, might not have 2006 it. was Borgette and um, Hensler. Hensler. Hensler, yeah. So you might want to do might a full-blown charter That's review. That's when we first uh, were on the council. Full-blown charter review for 2017. Yeah. They might have been on the first year. They might have yeah, got right. approved in 2008, but they were on the charter review in 2006 to 8. We put him on. I remember I put Sean Hensler on. He was a constituent of mine. So you may, so you may, want, you may want a full-blown charter review commission. And, and for 2018, have it on the ballot, but done right. It's not going to hurt. And just, just for, um, I don't know if you want to call it clarification or whatnot, but we do have to have two public hearings for the new council members. But as far as the workshops, we have two on here. I think last <laughs> year there might have been a comment at one point that one of them ran a little bit longer, so there was some internal discussion about maybe doing three workshops. That's, again, at the council's discretion. We just put two to be consistent with what we've done in the past, but those can be... Well, didn't you know, we say last time more. Put, put more, and then we could always eliminate after right. if we get done you earlier? Have, again, it's you better have better to discretion. put one more, Dave, right, than, than <laughs> to put one less, mm -hmm. because it's going to be easier to say we're all done, it's our last one, than to right. say, oh, we're going to add another one on. I mean, I think it's easier to eliminate mm -hmm. than to add. Again, that's at, your, that's at the council's discretion. That's so my you opinion. Have just the public hearings, we do have to, we yeah, actually that, have that, to have two. That one that's required. ran pretty late because we're trying to get cool. it on. Yeah. That was a, that's why so I think two, two is stretching it. You're gonna, you guys are going to go loopy. You're going to be yep. looking at numbers. You're, you're, Throwing you're, things. You're going to need three or four. <laughs> so three, I, I, I think, three, I think this, is, this is the start, but I think you have to plug in one or two more days because when you start getting into police, fire, and municipal all mm -hmm. on the same night, just a headache. And I think we're going to get more participation this year by the some of the comments. And, and again, stuff. we have them on here as a Tuesday, and then right. Tuesday the following week could go through Tuesday, Tuesday, Thursday of one week, or Tuesday, Thursday of the next week, unless you know that you have some conflicts with that. Um, but again, it's something that we can move around, and now's the time to have the discussion so we can see what fits in everybody's schedule and what is you know what you're looking to do, and then we can schedule them accordingly. I'm I'm basically I can as long as I have it, I can put it on the calendar, and again. If somebody can't make it, we're not going to stop it. We can still continue. Yeah. If they have ideas, I mean, we're going to have other meetings. We can do it here and make sure it's all televised. So yeah. And anybody um, can watch if they miss it. Mm -hmm. Mostly the Tuesday nights, we always got open anyway because yeah. it's always a council meeting. So that works out well. Yeah, we might have every night's good for me, but yeah, that's one, what I one Monday on a month, that's it. <coughs> all right. So, so I'm fine with this. Okay. Thank and you. I think the rest of the Thanks, council. Sean. Thanks, Sean. Town Council Portrait, sponsored by Councilman Padula. Yes, um, by charter, by the what we put in the uh, resolution that we have to have it so many weeks after the election. Yeah. Well, it is, and, and I agree because you and I were talking about it the hallway after the last council meeting, right. which was mid-December. Right. Um, I, we just need to find out who we're going to hire. The person that did this town, the two last portraits. I is no longer in town. Yes, he is. I thought he moved. I thought nope. he moved to Ohio. He didn't sell the house. Steve. Steve didn't move to Ohio? Where's his kid? Where's the grandkid? I don't know. You shipped him off? I <laughs> talked to him the other day. He told me he was from Ohio. He had a problem. Up, <laughs> <laughs> unless he's calling me and looking at his camera or something. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's with his protection. All right, so <laughs> let's reach out to Steve. Right. Steve, I, I, um, we'll we, we had traveled there for the picture. Klinger. Maybe. Steve Klinger. He's um, on. Um, Marion should have us. Yeah, Marion has all yeah. his contact info. If not, we'll get somebody. We'd like to get someone from in town. I just totally moved on. Oh, oh. You guys want to take it? And um, 
What's that? We're going to take it as soon as we get the photographer, as soon as possible. Yes. So when normally what we'll do, do it uh, uh, an hour, half hour before the council meeting. Yeah. What we so normally do is we, it, we dress up on our Yeah, we're going to as soon as possible. February 7th is the next council Hold meeting. Hold on one second. We can get it. We normally dress up in our suits, right. cover the TV with a flag. Um, we put a, yeah, we usually put the, the town flag. flag. Yeah. yeah. Just take a look out there, and we just take our picture. There's nothing hard about it. Explain, let us know how, how to take a picture. <laughs> nothing hard about it. If you have a powder room, I don't want to know nothing. Just go do what you got to do. We're going to, as soon as possible, call no, Jay, you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll try, we'll set it up for I'm the first. I'm putting February 7th. February 7th. If it's not 7th, it'll be the, the following <laughs> council meeting. Go get your Ralph Lauren suit. <laughs> I think we should all dress the same. I might feel like a woman that day. I might dress in my all gown. Right, that's enough. Let's go. <laughs> Fire hydrants sponsored by Councilman Padula. Fire hydrants. Tim, did you, um, I've been in contact with Coventry, and um, there's a suit going on about our fire hydrants and our Kent County water uh, almost doubling our rates. And um, what I've been told and what I want to know, instead of all the rumors flying around, that they don't own the fire hydrants that the town does. And if that's the case, uh, I know in Coventry's situation, they're going to owe Coventry millions and millions of dollars. And unfortunately, the rate payers are going to pay for this, whether we win, lose, or draw. But, okay. Tim, you... you uh, Probably three weeks before Mr. Palin spoke to you, he had spoken to me and said, basically, that there was a group <coughs> of municipalities and also fire districts that were exploring whether or not they were going to file type of class action matter against the Kent County Water Authority because of this issue as to who owns the hydrants, who owned them in the past, and if in fact the municipalities and or the uh, water authorities did own them, how were they transferred to the ownership of the water authority? I've spoken to Patrick Sullivan who represents the water authority. He indicated to me that this issue was brought before the Superior Court back in 2015 on a matter which was brought regarding a collection by Kent County Water Authority. Uh, Arthur Reed, representing the Coventry Fire District, filed uh, an answer in, it, in their defense, indicated that there was no um, memor there was nothing memorializing ownership of the hydrants to either the Kent County Water Authority, the municipalities, or the fire district. Mr. Sullivan is going to get me the transcripts of what occurred in court. I'm gonna take a look at them. I'm also going to get together with Mr. Reed of the Coventry Fire District and also Nick Gorham um, in Coventry because Coventry, even though there's fire districts there, they have to be included uh, to find out what direction this is going to go. Now, this is separate and apart from the 17% rate increase that the um, Water Authority wanted before the PUC. My understanding is they went before the PUC and they may have obtained an 11% increase. When they only wanted eight anyway. Well, it, it, they didn't get the full 17. But this issue of ownership, sure. whether or not the Kent County Water Authority owns them or the town owns them, um, right now is still just, it, it's, it's in, a, in outline form, we're trying to get more information. So what I'll like to do is report back to the council at the next meeting or to the sewer subcommittee prior to that so we can address it more down there. Because I don't know if there's any money to be had, money to be gained, or just a, might be a wild goose chase. It's worth looking at. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Might be like I said, a little as leverage. As, as soon as I get the information from Sullivan regarding that issue in 2015, It'll hopefully be a lot of leverage. a little clearer uh, picture of where the courts are with this issue. And just, just for the council members that might not be aware, the exact dollar amount they charge us a year. For now it's uh, it's in excess of four hundred thousand. So we Rent. basically paid Kent County Water for uh, Kent County Water four hundred thousand dollars, over four hundred thousand dollars a year for their fire hydrants. And our firemen have to shovel it out. And we yeah, and we maintain them. Maintain and maintain them. them. Well, they pay them when needed. So, so we're fighting over the hydrant itself, correct? The hydrant owns itself, the hydrant who itself owns it? The and what is the leverage that we would have? The water is Charge them rent. The water They're on town property. Rent. We own the hydrants. The water is owned by Maybe 40% increase in the rent. Right. The only problem is if you charge the water authority rent 
I ultimately, in turn, it's going to go on the end user. Sure. 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 And we're all getting, we're getting it one way or the other. They're going to no, charge but, us. but again, right now, the 400000 that we pay as a town, and we push it back on them. We went through this a couple of years ago because we, we were pushing back. Pushing it. And it was told to us, and they, and they came to us just recently and asked us to give up the control of it. The oh, fire hydrants, we denied it because we said no matter, w at least right now, if they come to us, we have some sort of say in what they charge us because we can resist a little more. Where the end user, if they say we want a million dollars for these fire hydrants, they'll just put it on your bill. And that's why we resisted the last time when they wanted us to give up the, the ownership of them. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's one of those things that you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't because if if we push it off, they know they're going to get the money from somewhere else. If, if, if it they're going to go to PUC battle. and say, we're losing $3 million because we're going to pay the town of West Warwick, we're going to pay the town of Coventry $3 million, so we have to gain money. But they have a, a, a one thing that I know that they have is they have a fund, which they're not supposed to have, and it's in excess of what they're supposed to have. So we, we, we also might have them on that. Instead of having like four or five million, they got like 30 million in reserve, which they shouldn't. So, so we have no say in how high the rates can go for Kent County Water. PUC. And we have to get our water from Kent County Water, correct? Or you get it from a well. Well, uh, well, I got a well. But okay. they'll figure, they, sooner or later, they're going to figure out a way to charge you for that, too. Yeah. So they can continue to charge us whatever whatever they want to charge us, and we well, have to pay no, if we want more. No. PUC has to approve it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we can know, go before PUC it's, it's and funny. say, don't okay. raise it like right. we did, and they yeah. dropped it so down. So in other words, you know, the, 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 the either whether it's National Grid or it's Kent County Water, they go to PUC, they go, let's shoot for 20%. We only want really seven. They're going to give us whatever they give us after that. It's a home run. So PUC right. will make believe they did us a favor. You know, they wanted a 20% increase, but they gave we gave them only 11. You know, they think they're doing you a favor. It's the, it's the worst. Yeah. I think they should abolish the yeah. whole piece. I, I, I had a $1,000 <laughs> water bill for one quarter yeah. once. And they met in Public and, uh, Utilities Public Commission Utilities manages rent. all utilities, so it's not just water. They do electric, right. they do sewer, they do gas. So yeah. they handle the rates on all those things, and any, any increases have to go before the, the Public Utilities Commission for approval. But it's something to look into, and it's something to have as leverage, and that's all. Thanks, Tim. All right. Thank you, Angela. Town of West Warwick Facebook page sponsored by Councilman Messia. Jay? Um, I think Angela brought this up, too, at the last meeting, too. We should have an official page. We have an official page, but it's, I mean, I don't, the last time it was updated was when we had the community event in October. It doesn't cost any money to run it, and, we, and like, us as councilmen could be at it. Anybody could be an admin on the page sure. and run the page. And, it, and it's like Fred said, the way it was explained by John and Fred to us. If it's in our ward, like a lot of us are not on Facebook or, you know, if I happen to get a notification, I'll know that they're tagging me. And Jay's good for that. He'll tag me. And then I'll know that I have a message. But most of my constituents know me. They know how to get a hold of me. If they can't get me by phone, they come down my business, even my home. But anyway... It will get notified, and, it, and, and it'll help. Some people, they really don't know their councilman, uh, very few, uh, and they're not. Here's the one thing I, I know about the way this page works as opposed to, like, my group. It's not the same type of thing. So if, if, if I would post a complaint on a page like this, it's like on the police department's page. You can't just, it doesn't just pop up in everybody's news feed. Right. Right. And you can even turn off the inbox. I know the West Warwick Police Department does receive inbox messages. Coventry turns off the messages totally. So that way somebody doesn't like say I'm getting robbed and they message the Facebook page, which right. now, this is not out of the realm of possibility yeah. on Facebook. This, right. this is supposed to be up and running very shortly, right? We have well, a page. Talking about something yeah. totally different. You're talking about yeah. Facebook itself. This right? is not the community. This is not, not the city. No, I'm talking about the community uh, this page. This is not the city. Two different items. Oh, so you're talking about right a Facebook now, page. It used to be, I know I and Libby had access to it last yeah. time where we would monitor it. I'm sorry, I can't. I, no. I can't monitor that much. In fact, I, mean, I would, the I would, last, I would snowstorm, I was out from a, a 10 p.m. to 6.30 a.m., then went to softball from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then went to a, a Christmas party. I didn't get home till 7, uh, 7 p.m., and it was an after-Christmas party, but I didn't get home till 7 p.m., right. only to see somebody say that you were rude and I didn't respond. 
Well, I don't know how it was rude. I didn't even answer you anybody. Just, you just said it wasn't my area. But oh, yeah. I mean, I told them before. It's again, not my area. With that being said, it, you said it wasn't your area. I didn't respond, so that's what I was saying. I wasn't responding. Well, I, I'll be honest. I was busy for 24 hours. I came home. I saw it. Then I responded. But, again, I was up for that 24 hours plus myself. So but it's kind of hard to be The goal of this wouldn't be But, the, Jason, you know, wouldn't it, it, Jay, wouldn't it, I mean, how many – different things are we going to have no, but here, listen, I mean, this, this, the goal of this one i'll explain to you the goal of this one isn't for it to be a 24 7 monitored page it's basically for an instance when we had the community event and it's coming up that's <coughs> posted people my page is great for if you post like a school closing a lot of people will see it for the first hour and then it gets buried amongst twenty thousand other posts whereas this if you post one thing like trash pickup is delayed this week you can pin it to the top so that way, if somebody right. comes to the page, it's right there. But so, that's on so a, right that's now, on the website. You're, you're right. Website. You're right. But, but uh, most on. people. Sorry. So right now, Nicole a lot of times posts to those two or three websites. Well, I have I developed the Westlaw Department for the birthday for the page. Yep. So yeah. So we already have. Well, so that's the thing. Uh, we have too many. So do we I make know, a public works Facebook? Do we make a town of Westbrook? No, we have a page. We have the page. It's there. It's in yeah, existence. Yeah. It's just, but but on the page, many, what my concern is, how many different pages are we going to have? I don't want to have. His page has other people. Yeah, but my no, page. I'm not saying your page, but you're saying you want to so do so on a this, Facebook on the official, page for the town. Well, the official town page, you can set up the page where I don't have Facebook. on the left-hand side, you can make the Westward Police, the fire department, yep. all the schools will be there on the top. So if somebody comes to the page, it's basically the funnel for all the pages. You yeah. need, I mean, it's like the town website. Yeah. Huh? It's not something that not needs that to be updated 24-7, not even every day, but if something's going on there, if there's, like, the budget, when the budget uh, election is coming up and people want to know what it is, it could be right there as your pin post so, for a month ahead of time. So it's not like it's a not place a group. where they're going to... It's not like the Maury Povich show, like my show. on everything, no. and we have to come back with no. the comments over Yeah, that's again. what I'm saying. Yes. No, that's, that's what we don't. No, I can't. I, it, and it you works. don't have to open up the inbox. You can turn the inbox off so people cannot message. Like I yeah. said, the way the comments... Yeah, but then they're going to say you're not answering them. You're no, not no, you turn attention. off the messages. You cannot... There's not even an option to send a message. It's more just for informational right. purposes. So people can obviously comment like they can anywhere else. It's basically the town website. On a Facebook, on a Facebook page, right. exactly, yeah. Right. And actually, when you go, when you go to our, when you go to our town website, it says Westward Facebook on the left hand. Right, side. right. So, you know, just we need somebody to update it. You know, I don't know who we put it on for that, or you know, whether it's Nicole or whether it's Paul or whoever. I just gotta find somebody that's got the time to maintain it. Yeah. Paul is like me; she don't even know how to start it. I don't have Facebook. I mean, a lot of it's just <laughs> now. <laughs> You know, a lot of it's if Facebook. Nicole shares something on the DPW page, you just share it on the, the official town page. Right. Listen, I just learned what a streak was on Snapchat, so hey. What's that? <laughs> I don't even have that. What's that? You Snapchat somebody every day, and it's a streak. <laughs> Are you on Snapchat? And if you miss uh, one day, you lose a streak. Dave can run the, the West Work Snapchat no, page. Set. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. So, Fred, we're just going to put you in charge of putting somebody in charge of the yeah, Facebook page. Okay. We'll you got it. Fred knows a guy. Who's Fred knows a guy. Done. We know a guy. Well, <laughs> you knew that guy too, huh? <laughs> All right. Street sign sponsored by Councilman Latrati. Uh, Jay. I'll, I'll make this quick. Uh, I, I just put this on the agenda at the last minute. Uh, a few different constituents brought this to my attention. Uh, and I just, I really didn't pay attention to it until, until they did. But we have, we have three different street signs in Ward 4, uh, road signs, where it's uh, Coit Avenue, uh, Tampa Street, uh, Miami. Uh, and, and they're all different. Uh, one's br green, big green with white. Uh, the other one? with white lettering. The other one is small green with white lettering. And the other one is uh, an off-white with black lettering. Um, I en en ended up talking with uh, Chief Barris over the weekend. I got my answer. The fire department handles this uh, as needed. Um, and they'll be continuing to do so as needed. Uh, it's, it's not really a critical issue. I don't want to create a big debate over it. But uh, thank you, Chief Barris, for giving that, that info. We spoke a while about it. So. Chief, just out of uh, curiosity, how much does each street sign cost? Why not? It's, it's upwards of 60 It's up. <laughs> if, if I'm correct, I think it's between 60 and $80. A street really? Sign. A street sign? Double-sided with that tape, yes. You've got to be kidding me. No, if you go on, if I, I only know this because I had to purchase some for work as a project that I was working on. 60. And a legal street sign based upon 
and, and double-sided hardware, it's actually upwards even a little higher, close to $100. So when Jay and I had talked today about it, he and I were talking about the street signs, I said, I just want to let you know, if we have to change out 500 plus street signs, okay. we're talking upwards of $500,000 of between, that's just material, not including labor. So I just want to give you that heads up if you want this for an item on the budget. You but isn't it is not something I'm looking to do? <laughs> Chief, no, no, I'm just saying. No. But Chief, that's a isn't it? We had today. Isn't it like when when you're replacing the old signs or when they're missing, you're updating them with the yeah, new ones? Do. So just that's how we can go little by little. little, by little. I, I, I talked to I talked to the Machado. Um, we have two guys that go out and do this a few times a year. If you have a constituent that says, oh, there's a sign down or we had a car hit a pole, we're on that order right away. If we well, have it, find if out we about have the street, street sign, if we have you this, bring it up, <laughs> did you find out about that? Um, we're waiting on uh, DPW from after talking with uh, Chief Parenti. He was told to hold off. And so I got to yell at, I got to yell at Lombari. They don't want to throw him under the bus, but. <laughs> Poor guy's been out for six weeks. You want to throw him right. yell at him already. Um, that was Eagle Street, right? Eagle, yeah. It's only been a year and a half. <laughs> um, just for the other uh, two councilmen, I'll share uh, what I did with uh, Councilman Chadi. The fire department years ago, the communications division, when there's a new development, whatever, renamed the streets. That's going to going back. We have the we had the bucket truck uh, to do this work. Um, I had two guys that go out. They're more than happy to go out and do this a few times a year. If we need uh, a sign right away, there's a sign down. We order the sign if we don't have it in stock and replace it. And we also, every year, are taking certain areas of the town and replacing them, take the old white signs down and getting them to a legal size. Uh, just for our own guys to find the streets better. Cut, and we even trim trees around the signs. So it's a little bit of time, but... Councilman Gosling, you're right. It's going to cost a lot of money to do all the signs at once. Well, because when I when I saw it, I had a, I actually sent them a text message on uh, Friday saying, "What's this about the street signs?" Because I was getting nervous that he was looking to change all the signs, and that's not what he wanted to do. And I and then today talking to him, I says, "Just letting you know how expensive it could be." And I was explaining. I think I explained the same. There, there are three three generations, maybe even four generations of street signs out there, and. Um, I think this last time around, you went with the lo larger lettering, yeah, so they're, it is they're easier nice. like and reflective. Nice. They're reflective, so correct. They're, but just remember, there is an expense to that reflective tape, that reflective sign lettering, correct. and the hardware. Now, so, Joe, d if I'm not mistaken, doesn't uh, um, um, industrial building at the uh, adult correctional institution have a sign shop where they make all them state signs for the state? Is, would it, couldn't that be something that we look into, call the warding, warden of the, um, of, of the prison? Because they have a big shop there that makes street signs. They make them uh, big green signs that come. They have the laminating machine. They have all the materials. They have all everything to do it with. License plates. Yeah. I mean, I can look into that. I would look into that because at 60 $70 a sign, my God. But to, just to let you know, I... I That's did inquire cheap. to have state, um, the ACI uh, people do labor for us, and I ended up getting better bids from outside contractors. Angel, I'm just looking online, and I don't know where we're getting. <laughs> but, well, I was just going to say, I don't know where when we're we, getting. When we did station four over the painting, I had a outside guy do it. I inquired with the ACI for them. But they had it. a crew. We used to use them too. Two dollars a day, each inmate. Yeah, that's changed. Three, two, three dollars a day. <laughs> no more. Angela, I'm just looking online real quick, and here's here's one. It's not even. It's it's aluminum sign. I think ours are. Uh, no, they're aluminum. They're they're a heavier. No, they're no. like a steel. They're like a magnesium. Yeah. So, double sided, no hardware, nothing. Um, high intensity, reflective, is forty four twenty five. Actually, forty-nine seventy-five. If you order the one sign, that one sign. So the more you order, I would look into order, that, though, Joe. You're not going to order ten of Goslin Court. You're going to order one of Goslin yeah. Court. That's all you need. So that's fifty dollars without the hardware or anything. <coughs> so. I would look into that because I think maybe we could uh, make a deal there. I will have Chief Parenti look 
looking for I that. I appreciate it. Thank Him you. Him and Captain Perkins take care of the signs. If I, if I remember correctly, sixty something dollars sounds right to me. But you can check. I don't get that. I, I don't get that invoice often. A year yep. we only get seventeen hundred fifty dollars a year to to put into signs and. manager's report got a few items um, we spoke a lot about the uh, charter and things that need to be changed the uh, the town ordinances are also in a state of uh, Al's been doing a lot of work um, with Christine at the assessor's office with respect to um, as you know you passed the uh, the exemption for the seniors and for the for the veterans um, and there was uh, a, uh, a state uh, legislation that was passed for that as well so Al was going through the process of uh, putting the ordinances together that need to be approved for those to move forward. He's finding a lot of conflicts in uh, those ordinances and then in other areas as well, uh, between whether it's conflicts between state law and what the town has, conflicts between our own ordinances against each other. Um, and he, he, he noticed in the charter that there's actually a provision, uh, 2203, that states that the town council within two years following the effective date of this charter, which would have been, I guess, 88, right? Um, and at least every five years thereafter shall cause to be prepared a revision and codification of the ordinances of the town, which are currently in effect. Um, I don't think that's been done on a regular basis. Last time it was done, Danny Harrop and Richard Fleury did it back in the early 90s. So to that point, um, with, with the council's permission, I'd like to have uh, Al begin that process so that we can clean this up and uh, get the ordinances the way they need to get. Al, do you want to? What, what I suggested to, to Fred when I came up with that was to for me to take the code of ordinances, go through it and contact each department head and say that, <laughs> send a notice to them. These sections in, in our code of ordinances affect your department. Let me know if you want any changes in them let me know if they're up to date so that I get feedback from each department on each section of the ordinance before we go anywhere and spell it. Once I've got all the, the feedback, then to go through the ordinances, trying to eliminate some of the conflicts we had with the, uh, uh, the, 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 the smile and the time of the, the collection. The one area that I would I would suggest, and I didn't, didn't think to mention to Fred, is that I would prefer not going forward into the zoning code at this time, uh, because Mark Kuma, the uh, town planner, and I have discussed this on a number of occasions. Our zoning code is a mess, but we really can't, I really don't want to do a complete revision of that until our comprehensive plan is in place so that when we got the comprehensive plan, we can then go forward with the zoning code to make sure it applies. All of the other sections of the code, I think we can, can go forward with, and at the same time, each year since we converted our fees into a resolution form, each year uh, in, in May after the, uh, after the financial town meeting, I send a notice to all of the, uh, the department heads asking them to review their fee schedule. And when I get those back, then I come before the council with any fee changes so that I think that we're working, starting it off through the department heads, telling them each of the sections that apply to the department and going from there. We can, we can do it uh, a lot easier than you know sending it out somewhere. So are you getting bored in Florida or something? <laughs> 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 That's a lot of work. <laughs> We're keeping them up late. That's right. <laughs> He's going to come back six inches shorter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You won't be able to get on um, a plane if you're not a certain height, sounds right? Sounds like a good idea now. <laughs> next item, I just wanted to uh, remind the council, the, right. the, um, the, the 30th anniversary annual meeting for the Rhode Island Interlocal Trust is Thursday. And um, whether or not you responded or not, I put you all on the list to go. Um, I think we, we, we will be receiving um, the uh, 30th year um, we're one of the few towns that have been part of the trust for every <coughs> year so we'll be receiving that plaque um, I don't know they do want me to give them names of who will go up to receive the plaque so uh, 
No speech? No speech, just oh. take the plaque, shake the hands, and get off the stage. That's, just that's let the what manager. Just let, I'm fine with that. Let the manager go up and get it. Check too. Go up and get it, yeah. Did you get a refund? Is it Lake Geico? You're getting so much back after Probably all. not, yeah. <laughs> So, all it's right. a feel good plaque. Yeah. So, um, feel good that we gave all If anybody that money has any up. questions about it, there's also a seminar <laughs> that takes place um, prior to the dinner. Um, late, huh? We can send that back out again uh, for the details for the council members. Yeah, I won't be at the seminar because I'll be working. But no, the seminar I'll be starts there. at 4, uh, receptions at 6. Okay. Um, next thing, if you haven't noticed, uh, in uh, Councilman Lachardi's ward, the, the, the fishing pier itself is in place. It is. Um, and uh, it's not open for business yet because we have to do the rest of the site work, which um, we're going to have to wait till spring. the spring to get the bulk of that done. We might be able to get some done this winter because the weather's been cooperating, but you it really just get depends it done on before open day of fishing, and you'll be all set. Yeah, we'll be in good shape. So, um, but we are also planning. I'm working with uh, Councilman Lachardi to uh, plan a um, a ribbon cutting, if you will, sure. and um, we'll also do a dedication at that time. Um, and uh, so we'll be working on the details of that. Obviously, um, former Councilwoman Gustafson will be a key part of that because she was the one that really pushed this forward and uh, wanted to see this uh, happen. So, and uh, probably invite Councilman Kenahan as yeah. well because he's been he was intimately involved with this process as we move forward. A long project, but uh, it, it looks really good out there, and I think it's going to be a great asset for the town. Um, the that Phoenix was, that was eight years in the making. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the uh, Phoenix Baptist Church. Um, this past Sunday I attended the um, the 175th anniversary of the Phoenix Baptist Church and uh, we the, the council provided them with a citation which I read and um, it was also attended by the um, by the uh, uh, Association of Baptist Churches uh, for the for the region and um, they'll be getting national recognition as well it's one of the oldest ones in the country and um, so I just want to pass that along and finally, the, you'll notice that the um, LED conversion of our streetlights has begun up in the northern part of the town. And, I got uh, some phone calls from North Pleasant Street saying, what's going on here? Yeah, so <laughs> wards, wards one and two are, are being... Uh, I didn't see how they look at night, though, but they're, they're hitting ward one. They're hitting yeah, all down yeah, there. Yeah, they, business they're, they're gonna, North Pleasant coming around. And, and like, no, they've, like, been in, they've been in ward one yeah, for... Yeah, no, they're they hitting have. a couple of different areas of yeah. town. Like North Pleasant's coming up. They're doing the Phoenix in your ward, and it looks like they're. I mean, they're small, them. and then they got like a string. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. So they'll be working their way down, but um, the goal is, I think they said into the spring, uh, they'll have the whole town. And so covered. far, no complaints of over brightness like other communities had. So oh, no. please. <laughs> and once, once they're all in place, we will have controls, so we'll be able to. Is it the right color? By individual light, we can raise Wait, and lower. Once, once they're all in place, yeah, and we can do that they from the computer. Lights. Yeah, and that's and that's one nice thing that you know um, we talked about when we first went with this we'll take care was that we have control. So if we need areas that we need brighter than others, it, it works out. Um, for instance, uh, there was some other unique things that we can do. Um, so like during the Christmas tree lightings or whatever, we can brighten it, dim it, even shut them off. Yep. And it also alerts us when it's not working. So we don't need a guy driving around town Correct. every morning. Yeah which we do now, we have the electrical inspector who comes in at the bright hour of 5 a.m. and drives around town and takes note of every light that's not working, <laughs> sends it out to uh, now it's PRISM, but used to be National Grid before, and have these lights replaced. We won't have to do that anymore, Correct. so we'll save some money on that aspect also. And so, and those obviously will all be um, power provided by the wind turbines as well, so mm -hmm. in addition to the savings we'll be getting from the less usage from the LED, we'll also be getting the, uh, the power from the wind turbines, which um, we did get an update on, on production thus far, and we are actually tracking um, better um, than we anticipated. Um, the, the, the turbines are producing over what we need right now, which is good. We're actually, I had a brief conversation with the new uh, director for um, Westmore Housing Authority. Um, I've asked him to supply us with their bills um, to see if it might be possible to cover one or both of their buildings as well and bring them into the loop of, uh, of the group that's receiving the benefits of this. So right now we have all the schools, senior center, um, all the town buildings, the wastewater treatment facility, and uh, if we have the kind of excess that it looks like we might be having, we'll be able to add um, the, uh, the, the uh, housing authority buildings as well. And I don't know if anybody just caught what Fred said. 
housing authority has a new director. New director which, um, yeah. The previous director up and left, um, went back to wherever, I think it was Philly. Philly. So um, I got a phone call last week saying, or an actually a text <coughs> message saying they'd like me to meet the new director. And I went to Fred's office, I'm like, are you aware there's a new director? And he said, absolutely not. But uh, I was supposed to go there today, but unfortunately I had to be here. Well, that's because they don't want to come before us. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's, uh, what, what was the gentleman's name again? Tom something. Come from Wall. Uh, where you come from? Providence. 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 Um, but everybody seems to like him. So uh, he's he's got a lot of experience. He ran uh, Providence Housing Authority. He uh, was at the Providence administration. Not going to charge him for using the rec room, right? <laughs> no, I don't believe so. No. Yeah, it's um, hold on, Stephen O'Rourke. So, um, but he's, he came and met with me today um, and, uh, you know, talked about a few of the issues. He said he wants to be, you know, in communication with us and keep everybody in the loop. So I said, that's, that'll be a good start. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to say, good. the other director came into a mess and, um, you know, unfortunately, he tried to change a little too much and, like you said, start charging the residents who live there for the rec room <laughs> and all that. And there was a lot of controversy and. He, he decided to up and move. in the bathrooms. Move his, yeah. It wasn't a good fit in the community, let's put so, it that way. Yeah, and again, he did the best he could, and you know, I wish we could have said goodbye to him, but he up and left on his own <laughs> very quickly. And the, and the last thing to mention is the, uh, the new Zamboni will be delivered, the new electric, all electric Zamboni, while we're on the topic of electric, um, will be delivered tomorrow. tomorrow. We already have um, wind energy development uh, paid to sponsor that. So they're going to wrap it. Um, so it's going to be, you know, powered by 100% wind energy. Will be, you know, prominently displayed on it. We'll do some kind of a ceremony, uh, in, in the coming weeks, we'll let all you know about, you know, when that's going to be. But it's it's pretty cool. It's exciting. Eighteen million dollars. I mean, that's right. Nice from the sponsor again. They did, and they they <laughs> they were very generous with their sponsorship. So nah, it's uh, powered by wind. <laughs> powered by wind. Yeah. No, it's a good good thing. And if anybody's been up to the ice rink at Field House, it's come on, doing very well up there. It's always busy. Um, while we're on that, um, I think we've all had a meeting with individuals about the Arctic redevelopment or the ordinance thereof. Um, prior to this council being elected about six months ago, the Arctic Redevelopment Committee came before the council and proposed an ordinance that they wanted us to look at. Um, I know election time came up and it kind of went dormant for a little while. So all parties involved, I've had Mark Carullo working <coughs> on this ordinance and going back and forth, including with the individuals who drew up the ordinance. Um, so what, what, Ma, what I said to the individuals that proposed this ordinance was to redraw this ordinance and redesign it to where good fit for the town of West Warwick, even if it doesn't mean you have to pass the ordinance, but to bring it back before the council and this new council for a proposal. The only issue is I don't think it, this should be a one item agenda. In other words, some sort of workshop that we have. And I was looking at next Tuesday, but I cannot be here next Tuesday. Um, but within the next two weeks, even if it's the 31st, um, which is a Tuesday, that we meet and discuss this ordinance, but I also would like the Arctic Redevelopment Committee. So the Arctic Redevelopment Committee meets on the third Monday of every month. So I was wondering if you guys wanted to do that with the, but then that was yesterday for them, correct? Uh, or was yeah. it next Monday? No, this no, it's not the 21st, so we can't have three Mondays yet. So yeah, we can have three. If, if you want, we could do it next Monday and meet with them and put it on their agenda and go over this ordinance with them. Or I'd like it, since it's our ordinance that they propose to us, that we they meet with us. So I was thinking maybe the 31st, oh, the 31st. we could do a workshop slash ordinance and then we can get this ordinance. And, and again, it could be an ordinance that you like, <coughs> dislike, or don't even want to put in place. It's just that this ordinance was proposed to the council we didn't do anything with it. It was in, it was in the works. Um, Councilman Giroux and um, myself, Angelo, 
we're talking about it, and I know a lot, we, we changed a lot. We wanted sliding scales. We wanted it to be not exclusive, you know, but we, we, we looked at a lot of things and we redrew that ordinance, but it never came back before us. Then the ordinance was proposed and I think shown to each and every one of you back to the original draft, which I know the council at the time did not agree with that draft along with the town manager. And we went with the town manager's input and we changed that draft. Well, now that draft somehow is no longer available. So Mark Carullo has been working on the draft and bringing it towards with the town manager and myself. And we've been looking at it and going back and forth with it and what we'd like to see and what I'd like the council to see is this draft that's being proposed in a workshop. Also, the parties involved, um, the person who um, did respond to the RFP is Nick Cambio and he drafted this original ordinance. So he may be in the audience that night also if any questions or concerns with him. I just want to get it out there. If you, like I said, it doesn't have to, if it's something the town doesn't even want to entertain, we can say no, but I just want us to have one workshop and I think the 31st will be Seven o'clock, 6.30? 7 o'clock, 6.30, what do yeah, you guys think? Like to, yeah. So the 31st, 6.30? And that way there, yeah, just send us all the notice. And then we also can invite the um, Arctic Redevelopment Committee because there's been changes on there also. Yeah. So, do you have a preference, six thirty-seven? Six thirty-seven. Okay. That way they're not, not here until eleven o'clock. Yeah. Reach out to the Redevelopment Authority now. Anybody else I'll have any them. questions for the <laughs> town manager? Oh, uh, what could I sneak in? What did I want to sneak in your uh, report, Fred? Oh, the streets. Wakefield, River Street. Yeah. Make sure because it, it was nice all last week. They didn't do anything, and I think they're just going to slide by. I mean, the cars are getting destroyed on those two streets. Any feedback from them? No, they were They were digging another hole. One Tuesday a month. Mm -hmm. So when do they plan on redoing it? I just can't have you yelling from the back, Fred. Come on up <coughs> to the mic. What, Dave? Whoever's got the better legs right now. <laughs> Night out. <laughs> I think it was on. Like Trying on. to sneak out. I was on. Way back. Uh, we <laughs> met with uh, way back. with. Uh, uh, the engineer of Brito, and um, they, uh, they were there uh, um, last Tuesday, I believe, um, uh, fixing that hole on River Street. They had to dig it out and repatch it. In the it. canyon? Yeah. So they're going to fix that, and then, but the, uh, the plant's only open one uh, Tuesday a month. I mean, I'm sorry, every, um, every uh, Tuesday, once a week, I believe it was. Yeah, once a week they were open. Yeah. Freddie, we've got to get on them. The cars mm -hmm. are getting destroyed. I'm on that road 20 times a day. My customers, the people who live in that area, Wakefield Street is a disaster. It's unacceptable. All right. Well, well that's that's the other question I'll I give have. I'll give them a call is, tomorrow morning. I mean, not they have to do it. But they were there too. Uh, they were there last, uh, Freddy, last they Tuesday. Were, they, they, they didn't fix anything. All, All they right. did was put a big dip in the road. That's what they did. I mean, I've never run across a construction company. Boyle and Fogarty did all the work all over Providence Street, all over Ward 1, not one complaint, maybe one or two if, if something happened during the time, and they will tell you. Yeah. Well, this is this company and the water company agrees with me. Angela, I'm going to shut you off right now because we waste a lot of time on this. Yeah. This has been eight weeks in the making. Let's just get it resolved. Yeah, that's it. I want to resolve yeah. from them. I don't care when they want to do it. We're going to tell them when we want it done. <laughs> that's the yesterday. Other, the only other concern I have is people are coming here filling out claims. Yeah. Yeah, they we think need it's a us. contact. Well, we, we need to get a contact for Wakefield Street and River and 117 now. Get that over to Paul at the clerk's office because all it that is, way listen, they can give it to them and say, well, they, they, it what goes to doing Kent County Water. It's all they, the same engineer from Kent County Water. Kent County Water, you submit it to Kent County I, Water, I not the town. Angela, people are still coming here. People are still calling our police department, filling out the police report, filling out all our paperwork, and submitting it with us. We don't. That way there, when they come in, yep. Paula says, here's your number, here's who you're going to contact, have a good mm. day. Yep. For 117, all those streets over River there. River Street, Wakefield Tampa, Street. All them streets over there yeah. that is go that they left a mess, Wakefield Street, River Street, 
That way there, she should have a list of the streets right. that can yeah, come water. I agree. And then that way there, she can say, <coughs> this isn't, it's, I mean, we looked at claims tonight that were this thick, mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with us, wasn't even our town, it was in Warwick. Right. You know, they shouldn't be coming to us. They should be easy just to tell them, hey, there you go, go to Kent County Water. That's that's simple. So let's just get that resolved because, you know, to be get quite honest with you, I'm possible. sick and tired of hearing right. it every meeting. Yeah, I I, 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 and I hear it every day. I'm getting every time I'm down here, the customers are coming, the car lots, and you can't blame them. They spend thousands of dollars to have the cars reconditioned. They're digging up all mud all over the cars. They can't absorb that kind of hit. These guys are making millions, and they're costing us thousands, and we're the taxpayers. It's not happening in my ward anyway. Okay. And the second thing is um, Eagle Street sign. David was getting on that. That's a year and a half, Dave. The chief, I don't want to say he threw you under the bus, but the chief threw you under the bus. So. Uh, we just, yeah, you know, yeah, you said the conversation. We would, uh, uh, and the mirror. The, the mirror. The mirror, and then once the, uh, the ground, I thought I was going to put the pole in for the Eagle Street. We just talked to you the other day on the phone about that. The pole? Mm. For Eagle <laughs> so Street. So many things. <laughs> The ground's frozen. They can't put the pole in until spring. The ground's not froze. It was the other day when you called. <laughs> Listen, when you stand in a shadow, do you see a shadow when you stand in the sun? Do you? When you, I do. I do. So I know you're not too far down below me. All right, let's go. All right. Thank you, Freddie. And one other thing, Fred. <laughs> well, one other thing. Nothing to do with you, Freddie. You can sit down. Oh, I'm sorry. You are sitting. Oh, no, you're up. Um, <coughs> making me forget the no through trucking that we passed all the ordinances. Yeah. Um, you have to catch them. I know what you're going to say. We didn't have any signs up. Yep. And no, they we can still they are, on the I can tell you right now. Yeah, one on the bottom, none on the other side. No, I can but, tell you. I can tell you on Clyde Street, they're on both sides, and they're still coming. They're still trucking. Unbelievable. Yeah. Tractor trailers. Clyde. Okay. Maybe uh, the street? police department yep. keep an eye open. Once they get the word gets out, they'll start. Yep. Using another route. All right, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Fred, for your Certainly. time. All right, finance update. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know Paula was the new manager. <laughs> we, um, we are still in the process of completing the year end audit for June 30th. Uh, we have three guys previously discussed the possibility of requesting an extension through the 31st of January. We did have a quarter, uh, call with the Auditor General and Markham today, and it looks like we're going to need a little more time than the 31st. Foreseen that took place at Markham, departure of a couple of key people to the audit staff, so that's three that are further delay than <coughs> we expected. But uh, by the next council meeting, I'll be able to tell you for sure. I'll run that audit report with you as, as well as the finance report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. I'll Any answer questions? my questions Thank tomorrow, you. hopefully. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, John. Okay, go, Paul. Come on. Well, it's. No, upcoming appointment. Oh, we're upcoming appointment. Board of Assessment Review, one three year term. <laughs> <laughs> Recreation Committee member one for Ward three, one for Ward four. Planning Board, one alternate member for our five year term. Sure. Zoning Board of Review, That's that was yeah. appointed tonight. Technology Committee, Ward two, uh, with the term to expire December 31st of 16. Ward three, with the term to expire December 31st of 16. And one would Ward 5 with the term to expire December 31st, 18. Yeah. Board of Tenant Affairs, one for a two-year term. Public comment. All right. Um, council first. Um, I, I, I do want to say something because I'm receiving a text message. But um, <laughs> before we – I know it's kind of late. It's 930. I just want to give a little shout-out to a little friend of mine who's now 10 years old, but he's watching every council meeting, and he's always been very – uh, impressed with elections, and I give him a lot of credit at his age. But Carl Swanson, get to bed, and uh, thank you for watching the council <laughs> meeting. <laughs> but uh, again, he even asked if I was growing a beard all of a sudden. So it's kind yeah, of that's cool. like <laughs> copyright <laughs> infringement. Next election, that was my gimmick. So that's you're gonna right. shave that before then, please. So, um, <laughs> council first, Jay. Do you have anything? Yeah, I, I have one thing, uh, and I will make it brief. It's 9:30. Um, regarding uh, an update. Uh, since the last meeting we've had uh, a month ago on the homeless living off Pulaski Street, uh, which I'm the liaison to a committee that we formed at the last meeting. But um, I, since the last meeting, I spoke with the Westerners, who are 
the private landowners uh, of the property that is located off Pulaski Street across from the fishing trail. And um, I spoke with them several times and they've expressed their concerns to myself and the town manager uh, and I've, have now made it clear that although they are compassionate people and care about the well-being of the people at the camp, that they no longer wish to, assure, to assume the responsibility of the people residing on their property. Correct, yeah, I, I received an email from Mr. Westerman. So, so, hey, yeah. so right now what they have done, um, they have reached out to an attorney um, on their own, and for that attorney's advice, they told me that it would be in the best interest to ask the individuals to vacate the property. Uh, they stated that their attorney has also stated that this is a, a lengthy process, which will not happen overnight. Uh, it may take weeks or even months. Recognizing this, the transformation committee, as we're calling the committee that was formed, um, is moving swiftly to, to place these individuals in housing or other programs. So I was able to reassure the Westermans, as I'm speaking to you tonight, that measures are in place to ensure transitions will be made from the property as soon as possible due to the support of professionals on the transformation committee. Um, in, in conclusion, uh, I, I would really like to thank the community for, for coming together with, <coughs> with both verbal support uh, through speaking with me and uh, through social media. Uh, just after Christmas, there was just an outcry of, of people offering um, uh, their kindness and caring nature, uh, and, and it's within our community, and it made me proud to be, part, to be a West Warwick resident. Um, with that said, uh, this group of individuals on Pulaski Street has several professional individuals and agencies working with them. Uh, therefore, it is not necessary, and I mean this in the best way, it, it is, it's not necessary, necessarily for, um, necessary for random people, um, even though they are looking to help, and I, I truly understand that, um, to endanger the people living there and to cause safety concerns by visiting them. Um, in closing, we, we still should all remember one thing, that we're still talking about human beings um, it, it, who did not ask to be in this current situation. So, and it's, it's my, my spiel, my public comment. Mm -hmm. Jay? I'll make it quick too. I wanna mention, uh, we got a brand new food pantry right in front of the West Warwick Civic Center. Uh, David Samos, I believe his name, Eagle Scout. Um, those don't know what a food pantry is because I didn't know what it was. I was. We were going to dinner at Boneheads and they were just putting it together. So we got a video. It's just like a big cupboard and it's it's an honor box basically. You can put food in there, non-perishable food items, tissues, paper towels, different things like that. And it's uh, you can if you you know for individuals that need it, they can come take it and we can fill it up. I think it's awesome. Uh, it's a great job by the by the Boy Scouts, um, David Samos in particular, and something that you know he may do in different parts of West Warwick. It's great to have one here. It'd be awesome to have one and know all of our wards so it's pretty awesome uh, me and um, councilman Lachardi went to the leadership conference at Bryan University last last Friday into Saturday uh, put on by the Hassenfield Institute for public leadership it was pretty awesome we got to meet a lot of the new council members and school committee members across the state um, maybe Jason yeah. could add more it was, it was, it was a great training it's one of the better trainings I've, I've ever been to yeah the best part of it was networking with a lot of different you know people like ourselves across the state so it was great networking with them and finally, moving along quickly, uh, me and Councilman John D'Amico separately went on our DPW ride-alongs in the last snowstorm. And I think it was pretty eye-opening for us to see it from that perspective when I know all the councilmen, of course, that was my first snowstorm as a councilman, so I'm gonna turn off my phone next snowstorm. <laughs> 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 Joking, maybe. No, uh, maybe. But, going, but see, from that perspective, you see, you see what they go through. A lot of times, you know, we. Um, on my ride along, we went up and down Wakefield Street, you know, most of the time because you have to keep those main roads clear. I don't think people understand that. They think that, you know, you're going to be, you, yeah, you know, it's tw I think we have, I think it was 26 plows between private and the contractors, and there's 152 some odd miles across the, across the town. So it's not something that can just be done overnight. So, well, it can be done overnight, but not instantaneously, <laughs> all the streets. And like I told Freddie, in the 10, little over 10 years that I've been on, this was the least amount of calls that I got in my ward was it was smooth, that snow was smooth in the road and i told i told freddie <laughs> the guys the guys did a did a great job the only thing 
They dug up my father's lawn. They they missed Danny's this time, but they dug up my father. I did see your father's when I dropped my daughter. Oh my god! I think think me and me and uh, me and Councilman uh, John D'Amico also we we filmed videos and posted online. I think it was kind of cool for the people of the community to see, Mm -hmm. maybe maybe have some empathy for the that they they really were not on food break the entire time. I was shocked. I was waiting to go there and see Freddie eating a sandwich or something, but he was actually out there working. So <laughs> he was eating Snickers when I stepped by. <laughs> Frozen Snickers. So, right, you did a great job with the snow. Uh, yeah, definitely. Job. I definitely recommend uh, Jason. You should just definitely take a ride along. It's definitely a fun. Exp- it was fun. Just let them stop at stop signs, please. <laughs> so thank you. Move along to Mr. Gosling. Um, Angelo, do you have anything? John. Um, well, first, let me expand on what Councilman Messier is talking about. It really was an awesome experience. Uh, we had been talking about doing it for quite some time, going out and simulcasting, uh, just to bring to the people an idea of what it's like to be behind the plow and, and what the plow drivers experience. So we had called Freddie earlier that day, and Freddie jumped right into action, and he made it possible for us to be out on the plow. So I wanted to, again, thank Freddie for putting it all together and being patient with us. And you had so much on your plate that day to begin with, to have two councilmen saying, come pick us up, um, <laughs> probably wasn't much of a treat. Uh, pass my thanks along to Paul Brousseau for risking his life to come out and, and get me. Um, and teach you how to hold the phone next time. Yeah, I'm learning as I go. I'm, you know, <laughs> a new correspondent. Um, <laughs> But I've recently been hired by wonderfully majestic Russ <laughs> Warwick, and that's a whole other story. At any rate, um, it really was eye-opening, as Councilman Messier said. I, I wanted to specifically thank the people uh, working in my ward, and I hope I pronounced names right, Ron Peral, Mike Kamara, Sean Riley, and um, you know, of course the private contractors, and then of course Tom LaMountain, who I had the opportunity to ride along with, very, very knowledgeable, just knew his route like the back of his hand, uh, I, I, I couldn't even see out of the window. He could have had his eyes closed. I think he was using the force. <laughs> this guy was just flying around the neighborhood and doing a, a great job. We're not going to mention grass. <laughs> People need to put up those little markers. Um, mm-hmm. So again, thank you. Uh, I also want to mention that I spoke with Gina Russo, who is the president of the Station Memorial Foundation. Uh, there was an article in the Times about a week ago, I just wanted to update a little bit more uh, because I did speak with Gina and basically what she said was they have postponed the opening date as we all know, they're, they're tentatively looking at a dedication in May. Uh, they have reached the $2 million goal but she wants people to know they will certainly accept more donations and you can visit the website which is www.stationfirememorialfoundation.org <laughs> they're going to need money to continue to, to maintain the property. Mm-hmm. So they've not, you know, they, they haven't stopped taking donations. They want people to donate. And the last thing I want to mention is just the fantastic job. This is necessarily Ward 5, but the town, one of our hidden jewels, is the West Warwick High School Players. And that's directed by Richard Marchetti and Ricky Spellman. Fantastic. If you've never seen one of the high school performances, you have to go. These kids put in hours. Richard Marchetti, who I believe was nominated for an Emmy, does just a fantastic job. It's at the same level as a Broadway performance. They have a professional band. They have hired a professional to put their costumes together. It's really amazing. So next year, if you get the chance, you must go. Last year was the Adams Family. No, it was. There was the other one that was. Well, this was Catch Me If You Can. It was the Adams Family. Prior to that, it was. Um, it was Grease. Right? No, they did Grease a while ago. Um, Legally Blonde was within the last couple of years. And again, they do a great job. And for the for the amount of money you go there, it, it's it's like you're going to Providence, but sometimes even better. Um, I'm trying to think of a show I went to last year and. Mr. Cornicelli, who was in the crowd earlier, he was one of the lead roles. And, you know, when my wife asked me if I'm going, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to go. That was one of the best nights of my life. I says, I'll go to anyone now because seeing the kids that you know in the community and, and what they're doing and, and watching what they did last year was amazing. 
And I, I got to say, it was one of the best nights that I've ever had at the Sid Carl High School. So it was a very <coughs> good time. They also, just to follow up, they do a dinner and show uh, the second Saturday evening performance. And basically, it's a white linen dinner that they put in the cafeteria. But you have your choice of prime rib, oh baked stuffed shrimp, baked stuffed chicken. It's fantastic. And then, of course, you get the show. So, again, one of our hidden jewels, something that I would like to see the place packed. I know the Chief's not crazy about packing the place, <laughs> um, but it's really fantastic. That's what you get paid for, Chief. Anything else, John? Um, the only thing I have is uh, I want to congratulate the eighth grade girls travel uh, basketball travel team coached by Steve Lawton. Um, they won the MLK Martin Luther King tournament in East Greenwich. Uh, hands down, I think each game they won by 15 or more points. So congratulations to the eighth grade girls. Uh, and I mean, I think the next tournament's in two weeks. So good job out there. And, uh, it's a team m made up of... Uh, all West Warwick kids except for one who's from Warwick. And that person from Warwick, the only reason they play with us is because Warwick does not have a travel team. And if anybody ever sees Coach Lawton and the way he coaches <laughs> these girls, his two brothers challenged him because he's always coached boys. Well, his boys are grown up off in college playing basketball or sports there. And his two brothers challenged him to coach girls. And uh, three years ago, I got a phone call at my house saying, hey, hey I hear your daughter's pretty good. I'm like, Steve, I don't know. She plays hockey. She don't play basketball. Oh, I heard she plays good. I said, here, talk to her. I went to the first practice. I looked. I'm like, oh, my God, what's he doing? He took a girl who's 5'10", and she was a beauty pageant kid. She never played sports in her life. Couldn't dribble a basketball. Couldn't run up and down the court straight. It was crooked. Um, and you look at her now, she's our starting center in eighth grade up at the middle school. And she plays phenomenal. And this, and this group of girls are so tight, so congratulations to them. And also, we can't let forget the track team and a little prejudice to it, because my son's one of the stars there, and uh, they had a, 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 an invitational uh, with 1,600 kids to be exact, 150 schools, mm -hmm. and my son come in second, and the school with the four by two, four by four, they took third, third, and fourth. So that was a big achievement. They're breaking all kinds of records. They broke their own record, 330 in a four by four, which is, and I love it because Hendrickson and LaSalle's right below them. And you see the Wizards right up on top. So they're doing a hell of a job again. And my hat goes off to all the kids on the track team. And the eighth grade boys also won their tournament in basketball this weekend. So everybody thought West Warwick was a soccer town. But they're doing pretty well in basketball. They're making, they're making them off. <laughs> just, just to clarify, do you want to ride along with a plow? Uh, can an independent go, or is this in the charter where it has to be? A <laughs> it has to be a Republican for the record. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, independents go with the police. Any other public comment? Comment from the public, ma'am? Just come up and state your name for the record. <laughs> ride along in the back seat. Ma'am, you got to ride the back of the truck. Right. How's that? Okay. Perfect. I'm fairly new to this, so I apologize. That's okay. Um, I have some issues. I'm uh, a resident of Palm Street. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Palm Street. I know exactly what you're going to bring up because I was here the other day when he brought when they brought the plans in. So we're not going to be notified. We don't come up for a hearing. I, As the I, thing is, is that I'm there's correct, a pot shop I, on Palm Street. If I'm correct, this is about the Compassion Center. Or yeah. Center. Well. Okay. Well, they've already existed. Oh, no, listen, I know they're all over. No, no, but this I'm one's already existing on Pond. They're trying to expand. It's cultivated. Yeah, it's but didn't, cultivated. but didn't. Not a compassion center. Okay, just uh, cultivated. Okay, wait a minute, yeah, because I was so told it was going to be a compassion center. It's cultivated. cultivated. Okay. But still, don't the residents have any say of what's going on in our neighborhood? They, they don't. Have, they're already in place. They're looking to expand it in that same building. Through, yeah. through the HIPAA violation? Yeah, through the HIPAA, HIPAA, like, uh, um. Right now they do, <laughs> because they're. Right now, HIPAA applies because it's not a uh, cultivator yet. Um, mm -hmm. It's there's still um, a co-op. So okay. due to HIPAA, yeah. we, we can't yeah, we don't speak even know about. You know, I gotta, I gotta. I wish Al was still here, Fred. I mean, you were, you were a planner. Uh, whether it's not in my neck of the woods or it is in my neck of the woods, 
I mean, if they're, if they're doing some zoning, if they're building, if they're doing condos, mm-hmm. I mean, to have a grow place yeah. and, and, and the neighbors are not notified and have a hearing, and a, and I, I mean, I don't understand how, uh, how this happens. Most of these people are out of state. I got three calls last week, a uh, guy from Chicago, a guy from California, yeah. and someone else that I and, talked and, to you today. I mean, all of the new applications do have to apply to zoning. All the new zone, all the new cultivator applications. But are they getting is notifying the, 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 the people that are For abutting? all the new ones, they will have to go through that process, or the council is going to have to approve. Um, Al's working on an ordinance for the next meeting um, to, it's to add it to the zoning ordinance on where it will be allowed. But what we were um, informed of by the state and what has been um, shown in uh, a previous court case down in uh, Wakefield um, for an existing co-op um, that's applied for all the permits that basically it serves as a, as a grandfathering and we can't exclude them. Um, but it's illegal by the feds. Place. It's illegal. Understood. So, uh, but now. If, no, yeah, but as of right now, it's illegal. So how can't we have the upper hand and say, listen, we'll call the feds in. I'll defer to the solicitor. How, yeah. much, how much money do you want to spend? <laughs> That's what I figured. No, well, what about the neighborhood? I'm but so shouldn't the feds what shouldn't, what is, shouldn't the feds be responsible for how much it costs? Well, hold on. The town is going to bring the action. The town can only bring the action in superior court and or federal court. All right? They are going to respond by saying in the state of Rhode Island, because there's been a carve out, federal government does not apply because it's already in existence. It's not a brand new facility. So when they expand they have brand new existence. They're expanding it under Rhode Island state law, not the federal law. That's probably going to get us kicked out of the federal courts back into state court. The feds are not going to come in here and represent the town. Just I mean, I don't have anything about the compassion centers. I don't have anything against the growers. But there should be a, a designated place. I don't think it should be in the middle of a neighborhood. Not, Nobody would like it next door stores, to them. I wouldn't like they're it. They're not stores. No, they're not. So, so, it's so, not. No, of course not. So the situation no, they're growing it. next door to me, and people know that they're growing, and they're going to go in there and rob. There's going to be. Well, that's why most of them don't. I mean, you've got calls. You said, you know, I, I definitely got a bunch of calls. I know uh, Councilman Goslin got calls in his neighborhood. That's why most of the time we don't know where they are. Like Even right. people that called me, they wouldn't tell me what street. Like I don't even yeah, know. But they're everybody knows where they are. You can name three places right <laughs> over the bridge in, in, in Warwick. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah, I just can't see how there's no protection for the residents for their quality of life. I mean, not that. Believe me, don't get me wrong here. I'm not against uh, them legalizing it, it to each his own. If they want to take it, let them take it. Everything regarding the issue and the multiples of issues that are coming from the original has all been done haphazardly. Yeah. It's almost when you look at a city or a town that was planned out a hundred years ago. And you look at it now, and they say, "What were they thinking?" Yeah. When they put in, you know, circular one-way streets versus. Yeah, but how did they get there to begin with? Because once they got in, all right. How? What do you mean how? The state licenses. allowed them to get in. The state licensed them. And the town had no say where they Correct. went. Well, they had no say. Just to clarify, just from talking to Fred, yeah. Th- what's going on now with the com- with the uh, cultivated licenses isn't changing what they were six months ago. These people were doing the same thing, and they Correct. were legally allowed to do it. So it's not something new. It's without something, us. Yes, yes, without so us we, even knowing we about don't it. Even know so it's not there. actually n- like new. It's just the state is getting their cut now. That's so really the I big difference. Just, let, me just, for, let me just clarify. Seven years now. So previous to January 1, everybody who was having these little centers or – What do we have? Co-ops. Three? They, they we have co-ops. three. We have more than that. We have a lot more than that. Well, three so that, we, that, that are grandfathered. Yeah. No, we have more. No, there's, there's way more, more than that. There's at least more. three or four more than three. So, so they at the time were able, the co-ops were at the time able to sell their excess to Compassion Centers. Correct. Okay. As of January 1, the law changes. Now you have to be a cultivator to sell your excess to um, a Compassion Center. Correct. So now all these individuals, now our ordinance doesn't match what the state law is now. Well, so the now it's something else that, us. No, it's, just, it's, it's something well, else. The, now all these individuals, unless they we sign off on it, unless mm-hmm. the town signs off on it, the state will not approve them to cultivate, which stops them from selling to the compassion centers. And, and the way it was put to me is this excess growth to go to their compassion centers is what covers their expenses to maintain. So, I, I mean, I got my life lesson in... in we all Basically, did. growing marijuana in the past two weeks, based on a 
one hour phone call. And yeah, we this all is all stuff phone. that I did not understand mm -hmm. until two weeks ago. And, you know, and as Jay said, until the state came in and got their cut now. He's out of state, right? Right. Actually, this guy lives in my ward. The yeah, my, yeah, my, the two, the he, two? Has a, he has a lot the of co op together. Well, the, is, is 70 percent of the licensees in the state have some type of out of state connection with yeah. business corporation. So the individuals that talk to me, they live in ward three and two. You know, he shared his name. They shared their names with me. They would not share the location. And yeah, they were. They were very. I, yeah, they were adamant about that. And I, and I didn't ask for the location, but I, I, I said. You know, and I understand th there's areas that we don't want them to go in, but they're grandfathered in right now, so there's nothing we could do about them. But I, what I'd like to do is, and I, and I brought up to Fred and Mark, is to have a ordinance in place to stop them from going into specific areas. In other words, um, I think they have to stay so CI. far from schools now, but CI we don't district. want, like here we are trying to redevelop Arctic. Do we want a bunch of right. cultivators here in Arctic up and down every block no do we want to limit and say anybody new they have to go to a different section of town mm -hmm. i mean i had the, the largest yeah. i had one of the largest ones down in phoenix that nobody knew about until they walked in the building right mm -hmm. and and come to find out they were doing a lot more with oils and everything else which could have blew up a whole mill you know and that's a, that's a little different though because no, that's that, a, that's that, totally illegal no, though, so I, that's different. it was illegal and and again there's a lot of places we don't know about until we enter the building and, and unfortunately and these people at least to their credit have gone to the building official for all the legal. permits they've done everything yep. mm -hmm. they're one of the few that have gotten all their electrical permits all their plumbing permits they've gone and, through got everything the inspected that, which they and the one that this they did it right for what the one that this uh, lady's talking about I'm sorry I forgot your Roberta. name Roberta. Roberta. Yeah. the one that Roberta's talking about I happened to bump I was here the last week I was leaving your office and this individual had his plans up on top of the counter and I just happened to walk over and look with Mark and the building official and I said what is this and needless to say I could smell what it was I didn't have to know what it was. <laughs> and I, I said point blank I said is this already in place they said yes we just want to expand so they can do the cultivating portion of it and I'm like well well those two were talking about it. I was told that they have 50 plants already in there growing and that they want to go up to 500 you don't think somebody in this neighborhood I mean they're going to break in I, whether it's listen, 50 or 500. I have people living in my backyard. I had to put $1,500 out for a camera system so that when my grandson grows up, he don't have to walk and, and get a needle in his leg because I have needles in my backyard. I have people going to the bathroom in my backyard. And all I can do if I call the police by the time they get there and not get the 20 questions, they're already gone. To live with the phone looking at my house all the time. How is that a way to live? I have a couple of accidents from people backing out of the drug house at 28 Park. And they back into my vehicle, and here's the reports, and I get nothing. When Mr. Giroux was here, I had an accident. Somebody backed into my car took seven months of me trying to figure out who hit me from across the street. Ed Giroux got this file. The next day he called me up, told me who it was, told me everything about that person. How come? How come now I've got two car accidents less than a month? I'm driving around in a vehicle that's, it's our vehicle. I was told by this gentleman if I wasn't happy to move. I did he not say me, that. He did. I've, I've got it in. I've got it in writing. I've got it on Facebook. Okay. Um, I have. I met this gentleman on Facebook, which I did not know about him until Saturday before the election. He was supposed to come to my house so that I can let him know what I feel. I don't care who's here. I don't care who you guys are. When I have a problem, I pay my taxes. You guys want this ridiculous amount of money in taxes from our water bill is double. How do you expect us to stay here? I just had to get work done because my kitchen sink fell in. The permits that we have to take out, you guys are killing us as homeowners. We've got people coming in, leaving their houses, just walking away, going to, we got homeless people. 
I can tell you how many times people in the back, I can look out my camera and watch people do drug deals. Oh, All sure. the time. Maybe, I mean, I, I don't know what else to do. If you have that footage, I'm sure the police department can usually work with that. If you have that issues going on, no. um, I'm sure Major Knott and Major McGarry would be more than happy to work with you, especially if you have footage. Number one thing is footage. I'm, I'm, if you've got people dealing drugs in your backyard, I'm sure if you reach out to the I police can tell you every they house work with you. Between Pond Street, Granite Street, all my hood. I could tell you exactly what they're selling. You watch them go in with, with, with microwaves and stuff, and they come out all happy. No microwave. It's, it's, it, I've been there six years in that same house. It's a family house, 48 plus years it's been in the town, same family. You know, we, we were trying to stay, we're trying to keep the neighborhood. Every time, yeah, I gotta tell you, Snow Guys this year, Perfect. I don't know who you guys got, but they were awesome. They didn't knock over our fences. And they didn't go up on our property. They didn't throw the snow up on us because normally it's a foul. You know, I go out there every every time it rains. My my father-in-law, uh, Richard Bisson, told me, "You take care of your property. You take care of the sidewalk. You take care of the water. When the winter, because Pond Street floods. Everybody know Pond Street." <coughs> So the minute we know a flood's coming in, me and my neighbors are outside, we're cleaning out the drains. When it's snowing out, we're out there, we keep, keep make sure that when we know the snow's going to melt, we make sure we do everything our part. But when does this be enough? When do we stop paying? Every time I get hit, it's $1,000. And, and it, it's ridiculous. The taxes, the, the water bill, now I'm afraid. I got I to gotta bring the washer and go, I don't want to, I want to even put it in there because I'm afraid the water bill, because my water bill is two inch, two inch change. It went up a hundred and some odd dollars from the like three months ago to now. Roberta, I, I don't want to cut you no. off, but you, I understand. You, you, you are all over the place right now. I, I am. Understand that. I had a stroke can, and I apologize. No, I, I'm no, I don't apologize. Again, I, I, Ken County Water has nothing to do with this. I know. I, I, well, you guys were talking about it earlier um, about how they went up on the place. And, and, and I I'm agree with you. Let me know. I agree with you 100%. It's just hard. But if you're experiencing that much trouble in your neighborhood, um, again, together, reach out to our police department, reach out to the town manager. If you're not getting the results, and Fred, you have you footage, your card. Yeah. I mean, they, they will work with you. And you know, and I agree with you, you should not have to live with that in your neighborhood. And if it's going on, you know, and again, if you're talking to the police department, they're not doing their job, talk to the town manager, and, and they can get together and figure it out. Again, and I, if you have it on footage, like I said, I know the police department will take that footage. They've they use footage when anything happens. I, I can tell you when my windows got smashed out, the first thing they went and looked for across the street at the gas station were cameras at the gas station. Mm -hmm. So if there's footage, they'll use it if they can get it. Yeah. So again, and, and I apologize, I, I, it's tough to live that way. It's hard. And it's I don't very think hard. you should have to live that way. I went for a walk last night, just to end this real quick. I went for a walk in my neighborhood. Do you know I found 10 little bottles of alcohol? And now it's just on Pond Street. I picked them all up. I picked up three quart bottles. What are they, this big? I'm not a drinker, but yeah, I'm walking down Pond Street and this is what I pick up. I take a trash bag with me now. And when you walk, and it's just, it's just, it's becoming really sad. This whole neighborhood, it's just gotten really sad. Roberta, the manager's gonna give you his number. You call him, get together with him. And I mean, like Dave said, you know, no one should be living like that. And if we have to put extra patrols there to let them know that we're not gonna tolerate that, I'm sure the major and, and the police department is going to work with you now, but just give your frustrations and whatever information you got to Fred and uh, keep us abreast on it. Okay. And just to answer your question for the, um, the grow center, whatever you want to call it, cultivating center, or whatever you want, unfortunately, they are grandfathered in. They did come for their permits to expand and <coughs> follow all the laws and regulations. So I don't think they do have to go to zoning. That's something he can check on tomorrow also. Um, we already checked. It's if, I mean, it's if a they don't have to go to area. zoning, they just have I to mean, pull the permits and go through their I legal. just don't understand how it could be put into. South East Town fought it and they lost in court. Mm -hmm. They wasn't even close. And, and again, I, I can understand that. I, I wouldn't want it next to me either, but. Oh, I don't care that it's one. next to me. I just thought we should have been at least aware of what's yeah. going on so we can, you know. Keep an extra eye out. I mean, Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't have to come to us. The only thing they had to come to us for legally is their permits. Okay. And like Fred said earlier, the town manager, that a lot of them that are on the up and up have come to us 
and have done everything legal. Yeah. And unfortunately, with the state law, they are grandfathered in at this point. And he, that individual, did come here and try to do it. He's trying to do everything That's legally. Right. Okay. I will give him that. And do I agree with the size of the facility? Probably not. But he's doing everything. Yeah, but legal. our fire and and uh, police got to be involved in that. The fire, I mean, the fire department does. Know, the fire department does know where all of them yeah, are. They yep. do. In the building they just do. with us, they know where all. Yeah. All the ones that have done it properly. 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 The information, the, right. the information I'm getting on it is it's foolish to do it illegally because say they get $500, and I'm just hypothetical, <laughs> $500 a pound to sell to the compassion <laughs> set, and they're getting 2000 So why would they want to sell it illegally on the street when the compassion centers are going to give them 2000 I mean, <laughs> my only concern so it could is be that a good thing. My only concern is that protection in the neighborhood. You can't tell me that. It's not going to draw bad people once they get to... How did I find out? I mean, I found out from the neighborhood, from people down the street going, oh, did you hear? You know, did you know? You know, so I'm like, oh, great. 100 years, okay. John lives down the street. 100 years ago, people probably said the same thing about alcohol in the Prohibition era. You know, I feel like that's the way we're going to look at this era 20, 30 years from now. No, well, you, you know what, Jake? I, I, I agree with her. You can't stop it, but the, 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 the residents should be aware of when they're there, who's there. I mean, that is their neighborhood. You know, these Johnny come lately take over the neighborhoods and, and they ruin it for, for certain individuals. Not that I'm against it, believe me, I'm not against it. But I'm against, <laughs> no, I, don't, I never smoked a joint in my life. I don't even like it. I smell it, I want to throw up. So, but, yeah, that that's smells terrible. Everybody used to I'm, yell I'm at me. I used to smoke cigarettes. They'd be smoking joints. Alcohol, yeah. alcohol, and woman. Those is. are my. Uh, a places. Lucy. <laughs> a Lucy's. Oh uh, yeah, the I knew what light. that was. Yes. Cigarette, uh, cigarette butt. All right. Well, I just want. Thank I didn't you, know Hey, good luck, but. The manager is going to give you his number, and uh, we'll do something for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Have, Have a good, good night. night. You too. Any other public comment? Motion. Done? Motion to adjourn. Well, in favor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Boy, I'm never saying 830 to you guys again. Every time someone says I it's going to be easy. I Rosie, how's I Matthew? I heard that. I couldn't believe it. I said, that kid's got the worst luck in the world. He's so good, uh, you know, helping all the kids. and. No, you give my best. If he needs something, tell him to call me. Except for money. Tell him he's got the money. I don't have it. So that women left. Oh. I hit stop, but I don't know. I wasn't sure.